Sonics basketball is being brought to you by cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. Thing. See First Bank. Isn't it time to switch to See First? Subaru, it's what to drive. Alaska Airlines, again and again, frequent travelers rate Alaska the best airline in the U.S. GTE, the power is on. Jack in the Box, always something new. And by Jeep and Eagle, the official vehicles of the NBA. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Sacramento, California. This is, of course, the capital of the great state of California. They're in celebrating Christmas down here as you are with yours. Happy holidays to you. Along with Bob Blackburn, I'm Kevin Calabro. Tonight, the Sonics and the Sacramento Kings. The Sonics have won six of the last seven against the Sacramento Kings, who are again undergoing a, a metamorphosis, if you will. On Monday, Dick Mata announced that he was going to retire at the end of the year. On Tuesday, the Kings came back with a reply. Dick, you're fired. And so Mata, the third most in NBA victories and the most losses, is now on the sidelines. Rex Hughes, his assistant, now takes over. Hughes was an assistant with Bob Boyd at USC at Nebraska, uh, a general manager and coach of the Big Sky Montana team of the CBA, an assistant with uh, Jerry Turkanian. But this will be his first coach, a uh, first time to coach in the NBA ranks as the head man. Now, the Sonics will need some additional help tonight because the Kings are going to come out sky high. Teams always seem to when they're working with a new coach. Sean Kemp will be playing tonight. The heavily bandaged right hand to protect stitches that he took back on the 12th of this month in New York. He will be playing tonight, as will Nate McMillan with the pole groin. Sonics will need those two tonight to snap their eight-game road losing streak. We'll be back with news and notes in a moment here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Before you try anything new on an Alaska Airlines flight, we try it first. Is it spicy? It was spicy. It was spicy. Uh, more? More. 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 Too far. Too far? Too far. Too far. Uh, still too spicy? Still too spicy. Why does Alaska Airlines go to all this trouble? So you won't have to. Ernst beats the competition by 5%. Give, 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 give me five. Uh. Uh. Woo. Uh. Woo, woo, woo. Give me five. Ernst has teamed up with the toughest paint around, Dutch Boy, an official sponsor of the NBA. Ernst and Dutch Boy put you in the paint. And give, right give, now, give it's specially priced so you can take it to the hoop. Ernst and Dutch Boy are in the paint tough. Out here. We're a thousand miles from anywhere. Is that a ship? Uh, no one will save us. Three Miller Genuine Drafts. Cold filtered. Miller Genuine Draft. For those who've discovered its real draft taste, the world is a very cool place. Time now for the keys to the game, brought to you by your local Puget Sound Jeep and Eagle dealers, where you'll find the Jeep you've always wanted. Jeep and Eagle, the official vehicles of the NBA. Welcome back now to Sacramento, California. I'm Kevin Calabro, joined by Bob Blackburn. The Sonics have won three straight over the Sacramento Kings, six of the last seven, back here on December the 20th. They actually beat the Kings by 35 points. And Bob, I guess that plays into our first key of the night. You still have to respect this team now with a new coach and a new approach. Well, that obviously is my big key tonight, Kevin. It's a metal thing. Respect for Sacramento. Yes, the Sonics have beaten them six out of the last eight times on this court. So obviously, it's a team they know they can handle. It's a team they should handle. So respect for the Kings tonight. The Kings are going to be playing with a lot of emotion under a new coach. So respect them. Let them know that you're going to be in for a game and go after them. And it was a great tune. Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. What was it, 1973? Great tune. <laughs> Uh, I think rebounding is going to be a very big key tonight because the Sacramento Kings are a lousy rebounding team. In fact, they rank last in the NBA, 40 rebounds per ball game. They've been out rebounding all but two so far this year, while the Sonics are the number one in percentage of rebounds this year. And when they out rebound the opponent, 13 to four, they've got to keep the Kings off the glass. You can't. 
boards. Uh, there's nowhere to go with that basketball. Well, and except when the Sonics got out-rebounded by Portland in their last game, which was a loss the previous three games, they had out-rebounded the opposition by 14 per game. That was when they shot up to the number one spot ahead of Chicago in rebounding. So, yes, that is Seattle's strength. They might as well take advantage of it tonight. Well, the Sacramento Kings are a great three-point shooting team. You've got Mitch Richmond, Jimmy Les, who led the NBA in three-point percentage last year. You have to go out and get those guys and respect them because they can really bring this crowd alive here. Well, that's for sure. And if you just let them sit out there and pop that three-point shot, a guy can get into a rhythm sometimes, just like Dana Barris did the first night, uh, game, the first half of the game the other night. Now, Seattle has not been a good three-point shooting team this year like they have been in recent years. They have been near the bottom of the league. In the first half against Portland, three out of four, but the second half they missed all eight tries. So if they can't make the three-point shot, they better they better move out in defense against them. Yeah, Dana Barrels nailed a couple. And uh, Dana Barrels again tonight, Bob, could see extensive time. We don't know how much Nate McMillan will be able to play. Likewise for Sean Kemp, but uh, with the current uh, Sonic starting lineup with McKee moving in there now that Eddie Johnson has been out, obviously, with the sinus surgery on Monday, that squad's eight and six. That's not a bad five with McKee in there with Cage and Benjamin on the front well, line. Well, it's not a bad lineup, and it's the one starting lineup that has had, had a chance 14 games to start together. I did, by the way, talk with Dana Barris prior to the game. His time may be limited. He said the ankles are still bothering him a bit. The injuries linger with the Sonics. What's new? We'll be back with a tip and the lineup here in a moment on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Today we'll do one of those brutal side-by-side -side comparisons that typically makes Brand X here look like the choice of below average thinkers. Take this Subaru Legacy on the one hand and this Toyota Camry on the other. Both offer automatic transmission, uh, power locks and windows, upholstery, and nice AC. But the Legacy costs $3,200 less than the Camry. So, a lot to pay for one less syllable. Test drive a Subaru today, won't you? Stars and still guitars, luscious lips, red as wine. Well, my philosophy in, in basketball is chemistry, and chemistry comes from teamwork. You work for for, for each other. Well, that's why I switched to C first, because I find that same type of approach. And the fact that C first is open back to five, that makes a big difference. That's beauty. That is beautiful. Isn't it time for you to switch? In retail, there are two absolute laws. The customer is always right. Say the ran show be fair. And the competition is always right behind you. Reason enough to have a GTE phone system beside you. Because we can show you ways to use it to be more productive. Yeah, hello, sales. Even get new and repeat business. Call us. Because your competition is also watching this commercial. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Foyer, along with Chuck Nelson. We've been with the Huskies all season long during this football 11-0 season. And now coming up, we've got a special on December 29th at 9, December 31st at 8.30. Just because the season's over, we're not going to abandon the team. We've got more people to talk to. We're going to talk to players. And highlights. And we're going to talk to coaches. And get them updated, everybody, as far as the Rose Bowl. And, of course, the Huskies' great battle against Michigan. It could be, well, could be a national championship for the Dodge. We'll find out. But join us on Prime Sports Northwest on the 29th and the 31st. Welcome back and Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year from the Arco Arena, Sacramento, California, along with Bob Blackburn and Kevin Calabro. Time now to take a look at the Subaru starting lineup brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. The point guard tonight, Spud Webb, seventh year, North Carolina State, class of 85. Squaring off against Gary Payton tonight, 6'4", second year out of Oregon State. Shooting guard spot, Ricky Pierce, number 11 in the league in scoring, 23 a game. Mitch Richmond, nearly 24 a game, number 8 in the league in scoring in his fourth year from Kansas State. Benoit Benjamin squares off in the middle now in his eighth year, averaging 15 points, 9 rebounds, a couple of blocks a game against Dwayne Coswell in his second year from Temple. He's a guy that could go up and swat shots, good rebounder, 7.7 boards a game. The scoring uh, or small forward position tonight acquired uh, by Lionel Simmons last year. They thought maybe they would work him at the two, but he works so well at the small forward, they're going to leave him there again this year in his second year from LaSalle, averaging 17.7 rebounds per game. Opposite Derek McKee now in his fifth year, 6'10", 225 out of Alabama, averaging 17.6 rebounds per contest. And over at that other wing, it'll be Michael Cage in his eighth year, averaging 10.12 rebounds a game, squared up against Wayman Tisdale, 6'9", 260 from Oklahoma now in his seventh year, 14 points, five rebounds a game for Wayman Tisdale. The coaches, Casey Jones of the Seattle Supersonics, chatting with uh, his ball club as we wait for a new net, some new cotton 
up on the hoop to be arranged, and uh, his counterpart tonight will be Rex Hughes. He is the interim coach here of the Sacramento Kings. Hughes uh, coached as an assistant, actually started at Redondo Beach High School not back in 1964, was an assistant in Nebraska, USC, an assistant with Tarkanian at UNLV for a year, and was the uh, GM and coach of the Montana Sky, the CBA. Was also a, a four-year coach with Kent State, but has never, never, been the head coach at the NBA level and uh, only began uh, assisting Dick Mata last year. The officials tonight, the veteran is Jack Knees, and he will be assisted tonight by George Tolliver and Greg the Rat Willard. So here we are at the Arco Arena, Bob, where the Kings obviously are going to be a little a bit sky high. If you read uh, the dispatches in the morning paper, afternoon paper, it's as if a yoke was lifted from the, uh, <laughs> the next of these young Kings that they felt repressed. By, uh, by Dick Mata's half-court offense and, and approach, and uh, Rex Hughes says, I'm going to turn these guys loose, let them run. Well, because of that, you're going to expect a lot of emotion from them tonight. You're going to, to have the players trying to come up making a statement saying, see, it was the coach, it wasn't <laughs> us. I mean, you know, and you know this is bound to happen, so there's going to be that extra motion. Plus, this is a ball cup which is on a five-game losing streak, and they want to snap that, at, albeit those five games have been on the road. And, hey, Dick Mata's final 12 games, 10 of those, were against some of the winningest teams in the entire NBA, yep. so he did not have an easy path at that, down, down the trail before he got fired. Now, interestingly, tonight, the Sonics have an opportunity to do a little catching up. Golden State at halftime at Denver is trailing by five points, 55 to 50, and the Clippers are playing at Utah tonight, where they, ha where they have uh, lost only one game all year. Kip Mata is, of course, an assistant coach with the uh, Seattle Supersonics. Uh, talked to Kip a little bit uh, earlier this afternoon. He said his dad was doing just fine. He said he would be doing, uh, Kip said personally, I would be doing better if we had a win here tonight to snap the eight-game road losing streak. That shot of Rex Hughes a moment ago reminds me, too, that he at one time, you mentioned his college coaching background, he at one time was an assistant coach to Jerry Tarkini at right. UNLV, and I believe that was the same year that Bobby Kloppenberg at the right. Sonics was down there. So those two are very friendly, and of course, as I talk with Rex Hughes today, he said, be sure to tell old buddy Kloppy hi for me. Obviously, they still have a great friendship going. And this Rex is a nice guy. What kind of a basketball coach he is? We'll just have to wait to see. But one thing, I think he wants to be one of the guys. This morning as I was interviewing for a pregame tape on the radio side tonight, Green Shinsis left, and he said, I'll see you tonight, coach. And, and Rex Hughes immediately jumped in and said, Rex, not coach. So apparently he wants them to call him by his first name. Well, the Sonics lead the all-time series 75-48 here at the Arco Arena. It's been rather close. The Kings uh, are, are rather comfy in this place. The Sonics have won six of the last seven overall, the last three. And, of course, last year put a whipping on the Kings back on December 20th, defeated them by 35 points. Getting back to the Rex Hughes situation, he is, of course, the interim coach. It's been well known that the Sacramento franchise is for sale. The prevailing... Uh, the prevailing judgment would have to be that you would wait until after you acquire the ownership group or the ownership acquires you uh, and you as management to uh, find out whether or not you'll stay in place before you would hire a coach. I would think that they would wait and let Rex uh, finish out the year, certainly, and wait until they get new ownership here before they decide who the head coach is going to be. There have been uh, several interesting names mentioned, among them Brian Winters. And Quinn Buckner's name has also been mentioned as a possibility of, as a guy who will come in here and interview as the head coach of this well, ball. Well, one other that I'd like to see, and he's uh, been given the credit of being mentioned, Paul Silas, the right. exciting. He deserves another head coaching job. Let's take a look at some of the scores around the NBA. As I mentioned just a few moments ago, we had the 55-50 to 50, uh, Denver lead over Golden State at Denver. Let's check in on the NBA scoreboard right now and uh, see what we have here as uh, there are five finals in San Antonio playing at New York. Beating New York 118-89. Hey, the Knicks, they haven't lost many on their home court. That snapped their 11-game home win streak. They are the they were the last team to not uh, have lost at home. Uh, other games uh, we have around the NBA. Uh, Houston uh, at New Jersey. And even only Houston's not been a great road team, and yet they go into tonight's play. They're still leading the Midwest Division as they lose at New Jersey 99-93. And Chicago wins another big one down in Atlanta. And Detroit and Orlando, they're, they're playing down in Florida, too, as Detroit on the road beats Orlando 112 to 100. And also down uh, Chicago playing down south. Now, that was an interesting game because in that game, Michael Jordan went in just a pair of a percentage point behind Wilkins for the scoring leadership. Jordan got 34 points. Wilkins got 39. So Wilkins still number one in the NBA. And Jordan is still number two in scoring right now. That's interesting. Jordan had the big game of the 34 points coming back uh, from yesterday where he was... Shut down, held to the 14. Pippen took over with the 27. Boston was hurting when they left Chicago. They are waiting comfortably in their Seattle 
uh, country club right now. I think they're staying at the the, uh, the country club, aren't they, out there uh, on the shores <laughs> of the lake? And they are waiting for the Sonics, who uh, will return home, of course, tomorrow to the Kingdom to take on Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. We're ready to go here. Our officials are Jack Knees, George Tolliver, and the third man is Greg Willard. Here out on the high post is Benjamin trying to throw low, deflected by Coswell, slipped to the near side. Pierce has got it, runs the end line, lateral steps by Simmons, and lays it up and in. Ricky Pierce getting the Sonics on top, 2-0. The Sacramento Kings start off with Spud Webb bringing up at 5-7 and 133. Outside, he is remarkably durable despite his size. He is covered by Peyton. Out high on the right is Spud Webb. Coming out to pick is Tisdale. Webb to Tisdale out high. Good jump shooter from 15. He'll let it go and we're tied at 2-2. Two -two. Tisdale lets it go from long range. Back come the Sonics pushing it up the wing. Peyton to Pierce pops off a long one. The set shot is good up over Mitch Richmond. Ricky Pierce getting off to the early start. Sonics lead 4-2. Bud Webb Hibbity hops across midcourt with the right hand dribble. Pumps it over to Simmons. Slants into the lane. Picked up by McKee over to Tisdale. Another jumper off the wing. He got it. Tisdale tying it at 4-4. So early offense. Tied at fours and out on the wing. Here is Peyton now. Peyton centers it. Just inside the key. Flips it over to McKee on the near wing. He'll elevate with a long jump. The soft touch off the iron. Rebound. Clamped in there by Coswell to Webb. They want to run ahead to Richmond. He's got a man on the wing. It's Tisdale. Baseline pop uh, again. This one swirls, comes out. Rebound deflected into the hands of McKee. Derek double teamed at backcourt. Simmons and Coswell tag him. Benjamin is the safety valve. He'll whip it across midcourt. And here is Pierce, near side hash mark. Ricky Pierce working on Mitch Richmond. Great matchup between the two scorers. Outside Pierce on a jump switch covered by Webb. Richmond switches back. Pierce on the Peyton. Nice soft touch on the penetration to Cage. He blew the left hander left hand side. Rebound Tisdale to Webb, centers it to Richmond, pulls up, hoists up a three, looks good, it is. Mitch Richmond nails the three. He hits 43% on the year, and we mentioned what a weapon it is for the Sacramento Kings, who now lead seven to four because of it. 10 minutes remaining in the first quarter. Pierce down low, low blocks with the Benjamin, backs, turns, up on Coswell, slips away from 10, falling away on the jumper, missed it. Rebound Cage, tapped away by Tisdale, and out of bounds. Willard uh, whistled and changed his mind at the last moment. Green ball, he says, so the Sonics take over. Coswell, not a bad athletic setter, and he'll give uh, the night a little bit more trouble in that middle of the night than I think he's had the last couple of games. Coswell can run. He's a long lean, 7 feet and 240. Outside on the inbounds, it's Cage. Slips it low, Benjamin turns. He's deep from 10. He rolls it up and in. Big man getting the Sonics to within one at 7 6, 9.43 to go first quarter play. Anthony Spud Webb, little cat out of North Carolina State, skips it low to Tisdale. Backs down with the left hand dribble, spins to the right. Hoss is up with the south ball, missed it. Peyton is up there, Cage is up there. Deflecting it away from Cage is Coswell. And they rule it out of bounds. Last touch by Michael, so the Kings will take over. No, they're going to jump it up. Good call by George Tolliver. Yeah, they just weren't sure. And I'll tell you, I couldn't tell from here, and I bet you couldn't either. <laughs> no, Tolliver had a better look at it than we did, certainly. And here's Coswell at seven feet up against Michael Cage, 6'9". They're in the circle. And they had him facing the wrong direction, and then they made the adjustment, and then our off official Greg Willard says you were moving in the lane. So really botched by the officials, and the Kings end up getting the basketball back. 9.30 to go in the first quarter of play. On the inbounds, Webb goes to the deck. He's up. Gets a handoff from Simmons. Webb circles out beyond the three-point perimeter. Checked by Peyton. Gary shadows him over to the far wing. Spud Webb. Lightning quick. Skips it low. Coswell posts up. Puts a dribble on the floor. Turns. Hoist one up inside of five feet. Is fouled by Benjamin. And Coswell will go to the line to earn two. Big Ben's first foul. Cannot get Ben in early foul trouble. Although tonight, Casey Jones has the benefit of one Sean Kemp. I tell you where he fouled him is just right at the very end there where he just came over to try to block the shot. He got him on the elbow. The Noit retired and kind of complained to the official about, you know, where did I hit him? Well, you could see it right there at the end. Here's Dwayne Coswell, his free throw up and off the mark. One of four rookies last year. First round draft choices all. This is one of the youngest, if not the youngest team in the NBA, the Sacramento Kings. Coswell hits the free throw, the second. And the Kings lead at 8-6, 9-13 to go, first quarter play. Mitch Richmond, a three-pointer a moment ago, gave the Kings the three-point lead. Down on the wing, it is Peyton. And Ricky shooting 93% on the year. He's been phenomenal with that free throw this year. Richmond and Pierce had a fairly low scoring, but even up battle the last time they met. Uh, Richmond had 18, Ricky had 15 in that game. Richmond, you might recall, it was his very first game with the Kings after being traded from Golden State. Let's see what happens tonight. Ricky has the edge so far, but I think we'll see an interesting matchup. Ricky Pierce. 
Now his 10th year out of Rice. The former Owl flips it up and it rattles in there. He's got a sour look on his face. That's his game face. <laughs> he was smiling for the game tonight, I tell you. He, he doesn't smile much on game day. Said he said he had some rest. Felt good. Sunday, obviously, the legs were not with him. The entire Sonic ball club. Weary when they travel to Portland. All right, Ricky hits them both in the Sonics after the made free throw. Pressure web with a double team of Cajun. Peyton will get rid of it. Richmond now will field general outside. Comes off the pick of Tisdale. A hard left-hand dribble trying to skip it off. But Cage is there to step in front of Coswell with a steal. Back come the Sonics on the turnover. Peyton centers it into the lane. A roundhouse right-handed hook over Tisdale. Won't go. Coswell the rebound. Out to Webb. They want to run. Webb pulls up. Dumps it over to Simmons. Slants him with the right hand. Lost the dribble right to Ricky Pierce. Ricky the other way. Bumps into Webb at midcourt. No autopsy, no foul. Pierce near side, whips it between the wickets, on top to McKee, over to Cape, jump pass down low, Peyton triple team, turns, Simmons to the glass, blocked away from behind by Simmons. Simmons with a steal. Uh, cross midcourt with a left mitt, double team, skips it to the trailer web, into the lane he comes, off to Richmond, great jump shooter, he's all alone, missed it. Rebound McKee. 8-8 eight, eight to score, 8-14 to go, McKee ahead, Cage sneaks behind the defense, and lays it up and in. Michael Cage spinning down the floor and a fine feed for McKee. And the Sonics take the lead at 10-8 with 8.03 to go on the first quarter play. So pretty good flurry there. Webb outside, right side, checked by Peyton. Looking low for Simmons. On the overplay, McKee denies him the ball. They whip it out here to Tisdale. Now near side of Richmond, pumps it low. Coswell, the up fake into the air. Oh. from eight feet. Too soft, rattles off. Rebound Benjamin. Up to Peyton, underhands it ahead to the shovel pass to Pierce. Breaks into the lane, up and in with a running right-hander. Ricky Pierce has got eight points. Somehow, he spotted the seam in the defense, exploited it, and the Sonics lead by four, 12-8. 7.32 to go in the first quarter play. Sonics on a 6-0 run. Outside it is Webb now. Lightning bolt pass down low. Simmons pivots, he's in deep. He banks it up and in off land. Lionel Simmons got great position down there, and Webb met him beautifully with a pass. 12-10 the score. Sonics lead it. 7-16 to go first quarter play. Good hoops here tonight from Sacramento. Glad you're with us on the simulcast. The key is wide on the left. Looking low for Big Ben. Whip it on the point to Peyton. He tried to drop a load of Benjamin. Spanked out of there by Webb. Eight on the shot clock. Peyton retrieves it. Glides into the lane. Lost her dribble. Picked it up. Hoist it up in the left hand. Coswell with a tomahawk block. Up to Simmons at three on two. Simmons into the lane. Rams in the pier. Missed the shot. Rebound Coswell. Missed the shot. Rebound Coswell. He is fouled on the way up. And he will get two on the great second and third effort. Coswell earns a couple of free throws on the first foul. The McKee second team foul on the Sonics. And a timeout called by the Sacramento Kings. The score, the Sonics 12, Kings 10, 6.51 to play in the first here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Hello, Joe. What do you know? All right, let's sample a bottle. Well, I'll make it two. One for you and one for me. <laughs> yeah, we get warm. Diet Coke. Presenting the G-Shock watch from Casio. The water-resistant sports watch that's ready for action. With a built-in shock absorber. It's tough. It's so tough. This G-Shock can take a slap in the face and not even flinch. The Casio G-Shock, it's one tough watch to beat. And now these new additions to our G-Shock collection from Casio, where miracles never cease. Five countries. 26 locations. 37 degree program. One institution. City University. We are your window. Sonics lead early 12 10 with 6.51 to go on the first from Sacramento. And this half of Sonics basketball is being brought to you in part by your Puget Sound Volkswagen dealers. And so far, the Sonics are hitting at a 45% clip, 5 for 11, and Sacramento 4 for 9, 44%. On that last play, Gary Payton went inside, got it blocked by Coswell. Gary's had a little trouble getting it. He's gotten inside tonight. He's had the ball, but Coswell and others have been hovering over him. He's had trouble getting that inside shot. Coswell hits the second 
Or actually the first of two free throws. He's two for three tonight. Coswell only played 12 games as a senior at Temple two years ago. He was the 18th pick in the draft last year. Coswell second free throw up for the second year player. He missed it. And Michael Cage with a rebound. Coswell's always been a prolific shot blocker. 124 junior year was fourth in the nation in that category. You'll see Coswell active tonight. Peyton on the point of what appears. Drops it low. McKee down on the blocks. Double team. Pumps it out to Ricky in the corner. Back it comes to McKee. Planted down low. Shrivels and fires over Richmond. He nailed the baseline. Jay. Derek McKee with his first two. Good two-man play with Ian Pierce. 14-11 Sonics lead. Richmond with the ball batted free by Pierce to the far side. Double dribble the call. Apparently, Ricky did not lay hand on it. Richmond just juggled it, went after it. Double dribble the call. Sonics take it back on the turnover. And here are the Sonics now with a three-point lead. 6-19 to go in the first quarter. And utilizing the Kings turnover, Peyton works on the point. Webb with an extended left hand leaning on Peyton. He picks up his dribble. Left hand side of the key. Peyton skips a low pass inside of McKee. He swivels by and he comes with a left hander over Simmons. Mister. Rebound to Richmond. Mitch Richmond glides across midcourt, pounding a right hand dribble. Hands off to the trailer. Lionel the train Simmons. Over left hand side to Tisdale. Gives up the long jumper. Centers it to Simmons. Over to the inline. Richmond darts to the inline. Pulls back. Long range jumper. Missed it. Coswell comes high over Benjamin. Swats it out. Richmond reloads into the lane. Up and in with a scoop shot. Richmond's got five. 14-13, the score, Sonics lead at 5.44 to go first quarter. Outside Peyton from Oregon State in the second year, but it appears the veteran left-hand side trying to come off the bench. Pick pulls up with a jumper, missed it. Skims off hand, Benjamin's got it for 15, rolls it up. Soft touch, missed it. McKee, the follow, won't go. Poked out of there and a foul called. On the loose ball pursuit, it's on the Sonics. Michael Cage, and that will be the first on Mr. Glass Eater, Michael Cage. Sonics on top by one with 5.30 left here in the first quarter play. Tomorrow, the Sonics at the Kingdom to take on the Boston Celtics. Yeah, Cage just came over the top as he reached for what would have been another rebound otherwise. Sonics lead by one on the overplay. Peyton getting out in front of Webb, deflects it over to the Kings bench and out of bounds. Kings retain possession. 13 on the shot clock, 5.20 to go first quarter. Tickets available for that game tomorrow. Call Ticketmaster at 628-0888. The Sonics and the Celtics. Tisdale down low on a left-handed reverse by Richmond. He walked with a basketball. So Mitch with his second turnover. And the Sonics will take over on the Sonics turnover, the fourth of the ball game for the Kings. Yet the Sonics have yet to capitalize on the turnovers as Rex Hughes controls the Kings bench. And his debut as a head coach down low. Benjamin got a step on Coswell, and Dwayne was forced to come over the top of Big Ben. Again, a good two-man play. When they ISO the two men, as they did that time with Peyton and Benjamin, they can... Come away with some success here. Well, that time as Coswell came over the top, he didn't block the ball, but he got he got his elbow right into Benjamin's head on that one. So Big Ben will go to the line on the Sonics. They'll still hang on to that one-point lead. Simmons certainly didn't help his team in on that play, did he? He contested the pass, and then for some inexplicable reason just stood there as Benjamin <laughs> rolled by him and left it up to Coswell to nail him from behind. Benjamin missed the free throw. Big Ben shooting it about a 67% clip on the year. Second one up, missed it. Tisdale with a rebound. Well, we mentioned rebounding being a key tonight. So far, the Kings have gotten the better of the Sonics at 10-7. Kings have been out-rebounded in all but two games this year. They're the worst rebounding team in the league. Webb outside off the Coswell pick. Siphons it over to Simmons. He pumps it low to Tisdale. Totally turns in the lane and rifles in the left-hander. A little bit of iron with that one. He's got a half dozen. 15-14, and the Kings back on top by one. 4.34 left in the first period. Peyton works wide here to Pierce. Ricky Pierce doubled out on top to Cage. Down low. Peyton posted up. Double team. Swivels by. Price reverse pivot. Pass up an air ball. Benjamin had it. His foot back circle came out. Rebound Tisdale. Up to Webb. Shuffles into the lane. Steers it by Peyton. Slides up on Cage. Contact made. No foul. Rebound Benjamin. Out it comes to Peyton. He'll force his way into the lane. Outside to Pierce. 15 footer. Got it. Ricky Pierce. Another Pierce. layup for Ricky. Pierce has 10 here in the first quarter. Yeah, he's hit those jumpers like lay in. 16 15 to score. Richmond bangs into the lane, double team by McKee and Pierce, stripped of the ball and a foul call. Take your pick there. Derek McKee. That'll be the second on Derek McKee as we pause 10 seconds on radio to identify the stations of our Sonics basketball network. Sean Kemp will be checking into the lineup. Kemp's only seen action in eight games this year, but Oik Benjamin will be coming out for Seattle. Mitch Richmond steps to the free throw line as Nate McMillan gets ready to strip off the warm-ups and check in now for Seattle. Richmond hits the free throw. The Kings at the free throw line tonight have hit now on three out of five. Well, the two injuries of the Sonics, Kemp and McMillan, who have missed, uh, McMillan's missed the last couple of games, and Kemp has missed, well, he's only played in eight games this year. 
into the lineup right now at the same time, and the Sonics are gradually getting people healthy, and Eddie Johnson may return to be in that game against Boston of the Kingdom tomorrow. Richmond second one up. He got it. Richmond has seven, and the Kings have the lead back at 17-16. 3-5-8 left first quarter play across midcourt. McMillan spins away from Webb, but he came in the back door, poked it free right to Coswell. Coswell out of back court, wires one to Webb, a hesitation to the lane, darts and ducks under traffic, wheels one up, missed it. Follow inside there by Coswell. He goes to the deck, the ball batted free outside to Simmons. Over to Webb from the corner, the jumper no. Rebound to Sean Kemp. Out of the back, back come the Sonics. On the wing he is McMillan, centers it to Kemp. Kemp over to Pierce. Gets a pick from Kemp. Pierce squares 15 footer. Rim short. Rebound Webb. Touch passes ahead of Richmond. The challenge three Sonics pulls up. Cash one to 16. A flat shot rolls off. Rebound to Conlon. Up it comes to Ricky Pierce. Well, the Kings are running as advertised, and they lead by one. 3 10 to go first quarter play. Made McMillan's sideline right. Works on Webb. Chest passes on top to Cade. Skips it low to Kemp. Runs in the lane, and it is blocked easily by Tisdale who held Kemp firmly there, held on to the ball. Tisdale had the easy block, and the two will jump it up, Kemp and Tisdale. Tis a solid 6'9 and 260, and Sean Kemp at 6'10 and 240. Here's the tap. Sean wins the draw to Nate McMillan. Immediately, Webb picks him up. Two North Carolina State products going head-to-head -head now. McMillan trying to post him up at 6-5, gets a low from Pierce, backs down a little web, double teamed outside to Kemp from 15. His pass inside to Conlon, read easily by Coswell, he's got a steal. Out to Webb, he'll bring it across midcourt. Spud Webb pulls up, long cast, 20-footer, yeah, right there. Webb's first two, and the Kings on top by three at 19-16, 2.37 left in the first. Now well, McMillan will set the floor for Seattle. They bring Cage and Kemp down low. Kemp runs off a series of picks, pops out wide, gets the ball, fires over Simmons. Air ball. He threw that one over the iron. Rebound clutched by Coswell. Up to Webb. Hesitates. Bang by Pierce, who reached him. Ricky Pierce with his first foul. That'll put the Sonics over the limit, and the Kings will shoot free throws at the 221 mark of the first period. Sonics call a timeout. The score, the Kings 19, and the Sonics 16 on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Damon Wayans, The Last Boy Scout, rated R, now playing at a theater near you. Time now to take a look at what's on tap by Miller Genuine Draft. The Sonics' next three Coliseum home games are Miami on the 2nd of January, Charles Barkley in Philadelphia on the 4th, and the Orlando Magic come to call on January the 8th. Call Ticketmaster at 628 0888. Made the team shooting very well, Kevin, in this first period right now, but the big thing is that the boards, the Sonics have uh, been getting out rebounded at the moment to 15 to 11 on the boards against them. This guy, Coswell, who averages seven per game, has eight already in the first quarter. Four offensive boards and four defensive boards, so somebody's going to have to block him off a little bit better. Yeah, Coswell using his superior quickness at this point, and he's been involved. He's had a couple of blocks as well. Webb hitting both free throws, has four on the night. And the Kings have their largest lead. They are now up by five, a 21 to 16. Kings on a 6-0 run. 2-16 left here in the first quarter of play. McMillan near side, looking for Conlon, posted up down low. Simmons on his backside. The pass into Conlon, deflected away by Simmons. Good steal. Tapped in and saved by Simmons to Richmond ahead to Webb. And he comes underhead, flick over Burroughs is good. Webb has six. 
And the Kings out on top by seven. Barrels down the lineup for Seattle as McMillan scrolls out here high on the right. Centers it to Cage. Back to Nate McMillan. McMillan works his stride the three-point perimeter. Coming off the Conlon pick, McMillan with a jump shot away. He got it. Nate McMillan. McMillan on the near side from about 18 feet. Back comes Richmond. Pushes it hard up the floor. He's passed into the lane. Deflected. Got there to Simmons, who tried to save it on the inline and couldn't come up with it. Sonics bring it up on the Kings turnover. McMillan will push it up to the far flank. Over to Barrels for three in the air. Got it. Tina Barrels hits the three-pointer. Barrels with a timely three at two in the second quarter of Sunday's game against Portland, in which the Sonics held a 14-point lead. Simmons double-team clog. Hands off to Cosmo. Straight away, 10-footer rims off. Rebound to Kemp. Here come the Sonics with a chance to tie. 115 left in the first quarter of play. 23-21, Kings on top by a deuce. McMillan to Kemp, checked by Anthony Bonner. Kemp over on the far side in his case to the inline. Checked by Coswell and Bonner outside to Kemp. Good ball moving on top barrels. Studies web, glides climb into the lane, draws the D over to Kemp. He rolls inside, had it stripped out of his hands. Off his thigh and out of bounds, and the Kings will take it. You know, Sean Kemp is having trouble getting back into his rhythm. He has been overplaying a lot. He is... He has made some shots without making a fake first. He has made some bad passes. On this play, he just tries to drive into the lane, and there's a lot of traffic in there. If he had pulled up and passed off, for taking a short jumper. And both clubs shooting 38% right now. As I mentioned, both of them pretty cold shooting. It's not all that much defense, just cold shooting. Here's Les. Jimmy Les now in the lineup. On the far point, drops it low. Richmond swivels, backs, turns, got out of control, lost his dribble, goes back to... In the corner to get it, and as it poked out of bounds with six on the shot clock, the Kings will bring it in with 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter, 23-21 the count. Sacramento Kings leading here early by two. Six on the shot clock, remember. Richmond brings it in to Coswell. Hands off to Richmond, poked away from behind. Cage got a hand on it, I believe. Barrels down the far side, hits the trailer. Kemp into the lane, banks it up and in, and he is fouled. Sean Kemp will go to the free throw line. All right, Kemp, uh, you know, the guy's, the guy's a great player, no question about it, and it's probably not going to take him long to get back into his rhythm. Now, inside, where the man is in his face, goes up, banks it in, good play. Used the backboard that time, not relying on, on an open shot. Remember that one he threw up, his first shot he threw up was about two feet long as an air ball. <laughs> Sean Kemp now stands at the free throw line at the ready. And a chance to put the Sonics into the lead, he does, as he hits the free throw. He's got three, 24, 23, 31 seconds remaining. In the first quarter playing, the Sonics went on a solid 8-0 run. With long-range darts by McMillan and a three-pointer by Barrels. Left-hand side, Simmons in the lane. Stop the first pivot, ball away, 14-footer missed it. Rebound, Cage, threw it up for grabs, McMillan was there. Nate across midcourt, slants one over to Barrels. Simply hopped to the inline, slowed by Les, turned outside. 11 on the game clock here in the first quarter, Seattle by one. Barrels off the pickup, Conlon runs to the inline, slips, darts to the inline, try to shovel one inside, threw it right to Hobson. Fouled in backcourt by Nate McMillan. Hobson comes to the free throw line with two seconds remaining in the first quarter. Of play. That's not what the Sonics wanted to have happen. They had that great 8 0 run that got themselves out in the lead, and they just simply mishandled the ball. Dana Burris, I'd love to have seen him work around to the outside. I have a feeling I've been watching Dana in practice. He's been hitting that long shot. I'd just as soon have seen him take one long bomb before the end of the quarter, wouldn't you? Yeah, instead of charge uh, to the baseline, where really there was no help down there available, Hobson out of the free throw line. You know, Sacramento has been tough inside tonight, too. They, they've been very much on the alert for shot blocking and great anticipation overplay on defense inside. Kings are a lot. Lousy free throw shooting too. Team at 73%. Hobson steps up there and he misses the free throw. He's a 67 oh, percenter. Second one up, got it. So Hobson with his only point of the ball game. Cage will bring it in bounce. Fires in the front left. He's got it. He's an excellent three-point shooter. He'll fling one up at the bumper. It bounces away, and that ends the first quarter of play. Tied at 24-24. We go to the second quarter in a moment on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. I grew up in uh, Indiana, and when you're born, it's like they give you a basketball. Uh, the road is difficult. The longest trip we have here is uh, maybe 12 days, 13 days. When you're on the road, uh, you want to keep in touch with your money and see what's going on. And when you're dealing with C-First, those options are available. Well, I think uh, the most convenient service is uh, 1-800 number, and C-First is it for me. Isn't it time for you to switch? Let's go to Sizzler, my treat. 
Right now, Sizzler's offering two delicious sirloin steak dinners, and you get both for only $8.99. Two juicy sirloin steaks, grilled to order, both with your choice of baked potato, rice, vegetable, or fries. So treat yourself and someone you love to a hearty steak dinner. But hurry, it's only for a limited time. That was great. We ought to do this more often. What does he think I am, made of money? Sizzler. Get ready, America. We can't hold it back anymore. It's the $100 million avalanche of savings, featuring $1,500 cash back on all Jeep Cherokees. That's right, $1,500 cash back, plus up to $1,600 in option package discounts. There are great savings on other vehicles, too. So get to the avalanche of savings now. When it comes to savings, we've got you covered. Drive for the gold with Jeep and Eagle. Get the advantage at your local Jeep Eagle dealer. This copyright broadcast presented by the authority of the NBA and the Supersonics intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written permission of the NBA and the Sonics is prohibited. Along with Bob Blackburn, I'm Kevin Calabro. Here in Sacramento, we head to the second quarter of play. Kings led the Sonics in rebounding 15-13 in the first quarter of play. A wild scrabble for the ball. Diving on the deck, Benjamin keeps it in bounds. McKee comes over to get it. Well, the Sonics come out of backcourt with Barrels. Head Manning in here in front of his own bench, getting instructions from Casey Jones. Barrels checked by Jimmy Les. Two mighty mites going at it. Barrels bluffs from three-point range. Looking low for McKee. Fronted. Denied the ball by Bonner. They swing it far side with a long lift. Here's McMillan from 18. He knocked it down. McMillan's got four. He's hit two long-range jumpers. The Sonics lead by two, 26-24. So they draw first blood here of the second quarter of play. Sonics were 10 of 25, 40 percent. In the first quarter, the Kings 8 of 23, 35 percent from the field. Tisdale's pass out of the wing intended for Coswell on the overplay. McMillan's got the easy steal. McMillan gives to the trailer barrel. Whips it in the lane to McKee. McKee makes a great catch. Swivels by Tisdale to the glass. He maneuvers and lays it up and in. Derek McKee's got four. 28-24. The Sonics on top by four. And a 20-second timeout called for by Rex Hughes of the Sacramento Kings with 10-5-4 left here in this second quarter of play. So the Sonics defensively step up the pressure here in the early moments of the second quarter. Well, they get the ball inside of McKee on that last play, and Derek does a nice spin job and just goes right for the easy layup. He could have maybe had the slam dunk, but he made sure that he got it in. Sonics right now have uh, tied their biggest lead of the game at four points. Nate, Nate McQuillan, you know, averages about two steals per game. His overplay that time as he gets that ball out on the break. And you know, one other thing I like about Nate, Kevin, that before the two games that he had missed, he was heat shooting 68% for his last four ball games and had really been coming along in his shooting. Kings at the moment have eight turnovers, the Sonic six. Kings have the ball. Kings will bring it in bounds in the paint. The Sonics have dominated the Kings 12-6 points in the paint. 28-24, four point Sonic lead. Less out on top of the point, works with it. Inside they skip it to Tisdale. Bruce turns, faces up from 12, falling away, missed it. Rebound, Karam's out of bounds. And last touch they say by much to their chagrin, the Seattle Supersonics. Kings bring it in with a fresh 24 on the shot clock. Anthony Bonner to Tisdale. Outside to Les, got away from him. Barrels will sprint up the floor. He'll steal the ball into the lane. Bumps Les to the glass. He'll take it up and in. Dana Barrels on a good hustling play. He's got five. 30 to 24. It's a six-point Sonic lead. Their largest lead here of the night. 10-2-4 left second quarter. Bonner outside. Hesitation. 15-footer. Pops it up. Missed it. Rebound. Covered by Conlon. Quick outlet pass to McKee. Derek busts across midcourt on the dribble drive. Four kings clog the lane. McKee backs in. The trailer's Benjamin from 10. He nailed it in the lane. Big Ben's got four. 32-24. The Sonics lead here by eight points. Back comes Les in a hurry to call a timeout with 10.03 left in the second. Sonics have exploded to an eight-point lead here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. By accepting the obstacles before us, 
we can find beauty in all things. Resistance to higher forces serves no purpose other than the destruction of personal tranquility. Strive for patience in all things. Of course, if you're rich, you don't have to worry about all that stuff. Well, how else can we expect to sell you a car unless we compare it to another car that's all covered up with a sheet? Take this Subaru Legacy on the one hand and this Toyota Camry on the other. Both offer automatic transmission, uh, power locks and windows, upholstery, and nice AC. But uh, the Camry costs $3,200 more than the Legacy. It's a lot to pay for one less syllable. Legacy, Camry. Test drive a Subaru today, won't you? Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Fans, an upcoming game in the Coliseum will be the 2nd of January against the Miami Heat. For tickets, call Ticketmaster now at 628-0888. Ticketmaster is open until 10 p.m. Kings basketball, Sonics lead by eight, and a foul called by George Tolliver on the Sonics. Marty Conlon, Marty grinding inside. First foul on Marty Conlon, first team foul on the Sonics. Sonics, by the way, Kevin, are on a beautiful 16-1 to run right now. They were seven down, they're eight up, so they've kind of taken over right now. Dwayne Shintzius in the lineup, along with Anthony Bonner. Dennis Hobson, Jimmy Les, and Wayman Tisdale for the Kings inside. Hobson, a lean back right-hander, but he extended the left hand to fend off Sonic defenders. That's an offensive foul on Hobson. That's his first. And the Sonics take it back, leading by eight with 9-4-2 left in the second quarter of play. The Kings have turned that ball over 10 times. The Sonics have cashed in for 12 points off those turnovers. Pressure applied in backcourt. Les comes up to beat Barrow, so pump it ahead of McMillan. Nate McMillan, the veteran out of North Carolina State in his sixth year. Looking for the back cut by McKee. McKee shaded by Bonner, not open. He's swinging up top to Benjamin. Good back cut by McMillan, but Big Ben overthrew McMillan, out of bounds. Nate comes up to force his nice pass, big fella. Jimmy Lestow will bring it across. Sonic seven turnover of the game as Tisdale on the left side works with it. Tisdale wants Shinsius out high in the post. He'll whip it over here to Les. Down low, Tisdale, the three-man play. Tis in with the right hand, switches to the left, leans in from eight, no go. Rebound, tapped outside. Collins smashes it away from Tisdale. Ahead to Barrow, skips it to McKee. And what do we got here? Les ties up McKee, but came right in front of him, so a flagrant foul is averted. Les with the intentional foul sends McKee to the line for two. No flagrant foul there. Yeah, well Here's Derek McKee to the line. McKee has five, 81% on the year, playing now in his 20th game, averaging 36 minutes. Various and sundry injuries have plagued McKee. Second free throw up, he got it. McKee has six. Sonics pressure the inbounds a bit now. Kyle in the backcourt. Kind of bluffing Hobson. Hobson, the quicker the two will bring it up. Checked by McMillan with 8.59 left in the first half. Sonics on top by a solid 10-point lead. Kings have yet to score in the period. Here's oh. Tisdale around how left-handed hook. Blocked yeah, partially in there by Benjamin, but right to Shinsius, and he pops it up and in on the follow. You did it, Kevin. You said it. So Shinsius scores the, <laughs> the uh, Kings' first point at the 8.45 mark of the second quarter. Seattle's largest lead a moment ago at 10. Here's McMillan outside on a jump switch less on McMillan. Wires one across the lane. McKee inside the near. Three-point perimeter, hesitation, left-hand dribble, stops on Bonner, trying to lean by him, a no-look feed inside. Benjamin is deep, up with the hook. Shinsius mugged him inside. Shinsius grabbed him and blocked the shot simultaneously. Shinsius' first foul since Benjamin to the line. Yeah, that Bonner was really doing a job on uh, on McKee, and they got the ball into uh, Benoit Benjamin, and then is coming over the top there. Again, he blocked the shot nicely. A lot of the Sacramento fans thought it was a clean block. It was, but he got him with the body. Yeah, on the left hand. Right. Benjamin misses the free throw. Big Ben. 
You wouldn't know this is the same man who hit 14 for 14 in the playoff game against Portland last year, would you? And set a sonic record. Ben been shooting 66% on the year. He knocks the second one down, however. He's got five. 35-26. Sonics by nine. 8-20 to go second quarter. Less. Brings the double team out of box 20. Rummages into the lane. Hands out to Tisdale. Went up on the left hand. Lost a hand on it. The rebound plucked free, and the Sonics are on the break. Barrel slows up. He didn't have numbers with it. McMillan and Benjamin. Trail on the play. McMillan will take it. Setting the floor for Barrows on the wing. Dana Barrows. Covered by Jimmy Les. Comes off the pick of Benjamin. Circles into the lane. Left hand and took a pounding in there. Tisdale and Chinsia step up to give him a bit of body in there. And the foul is on Wayman Tisdale, who weighs all of 260 pounds. Dana Barrows. You know, Dana, Dana Barrows is one guy normally doesn't argue too much. He goes in, crashed in there. He got knocked down by both Tisdale and Chinsia. Early right in front of us here, Dana was arguing to the official about Jim Les manhandling him out there at three-point range. You know, you know, Kevin, one thing that's good right now, you notice how many second-unit players have stayed in the game yeah. for a long time, and the Sonics have moved ahead while they've been in there. This is good for the team. Well, they uh, got a whole team substitution out of the Sacramento Kings. They're going to put in a fresh five. Well, Tisdale will be the only lone holdover, uh, an original starter. So they've got all the starters in now with Webb, Coswell, Richmond, Simmons, and Tisdale. Barrels to the line. Dana's first is good. The second one up. He pumps them both in. He's got seven. Sonics lead it 37-26. And so Seattle has the 11-point spread, their largest lead of the night. Mitch Richmond working with it outside. 7.50 to go, second quarter. Richmond to Simmons. Over to Webb, high on the right. In the corner, Richmond with it. Forces a pass low. Collin on the overplay. Tisdale taps it away. Here's a long lead pass. Barrel sprints away. He's got a circle into the corner to get it. He'll bring it back outside. So the Sonics getting it up in a hurry. 7.34 left, second quarter. Barrel off the Benjamin pick. Scampers with the left hand, makes a hard cut. Nearly lost his footing. Flips it out to McMillan. Lead pass inside of McKee. He'll go up, bring it down, go back up again. Switches right to left hand on the reverse. Up and in. He's got eight points. Lovely feed from McMillan. The Sonics by 13. And good, crisp passing. Sensational defense here in the second quarter as McKee comes up with a steal but walks on the sideline. Outstanding overplay defense of Seattle tonight with 7.13 left in the second quarter. It has triggered them to a 13-point lead. And they have the, the team frustrated to Sacramento, and the fans are really getting frustrated right now. Kings bring it in bounds, and here's Simmons. Lionel Simmons, the L train, with a reverse pivot right to left hand, left hand side of the lane, turned away by McKee, hands up to Richmond. Richmond back on the top to Simmons, 17 on the shot clock. Simmons cash it off to Richmond. We've got three in the key. On the Kings. Boy, I tell you, turnovers have absolutely killed the Kings. They're 13th here in the ball game, And the Sonics have cashed in for 14 points off the turnovers. The Sonics have been guilty of eight turnovers for five King baskets. And Kevin, that's, points. that's seven turnovers in five minutes in this period by Sacramento. That's been a big thing. 13-point lead for Seattle. Here's Barrels on the near side. Comes off the Benjamin pick. Hard cut into the lane. Draws the D out to McMillan. A three. It rolls. Comes off into the hands of Tisdale. He'll hand to Spud Webb. Up the floor to Richmond. Plants his feet inside the three-point arc. Let's it go. He missed it. Rebound gathered in by McKee. Dave McMillan will bring it up. Arches a pass over to McKee. Runs into the lane. He got... Uh, Jammed up by Tisdale, managed to spin one off glass. Kings of the rebound. Richmond leads Webb, hands off to Simmons. He'll lay it up and over the left hand. Simmons with four. That was a great feed there by Webb. 39 28. It's an 11 point spread. 6 18 to go, second period. Barrels trying to work the two man play with McKees, trying to get away from Tisdale. Barrels sprints right by his man Webb. And he comes with a left hand leader. Dana Barrels with 9.6 in the quarter. Nice play. Back comes Webb into the lane. Glides by Common, trying to hand off inside. Ball goes out of bounds off Simmons' hands. And the Sonics will take it on the 15th turnover for the Kings here in the ballgame. Boy, the Kings are self-destructing. Seattle leading by 13 with 6.03 left in the second quarter. Seattle has caused some of that. There was some excellent overplay on defense, which you brought up a few minutes ago. They seem to be pushing that ball almost to the detriment of their offense. Here's McMillan on the point of it, and McKee down low. Benjamin Coswell on the overplay, and his hand on the back of Benjamin. Second foul on Dwayne Coswell. You know how you're a kid, and you put your hand on the fence, and you balled over it? That's what he looked like he was going to do on yeah. Benjamin's shoulder that time. Couldn't quite make it over Big Ben. Shoulders, 5.50 to go, second quarter on the inbounds. Barros in the wing. Barrels is covered by Webb, taking a look inside. Benjamin trying to come up and screen for Dana. Barrels trying to rough Webb off that pick, slants him with the right hand, pulls up, double team, down it comes. Good rotation of the ball to McMillan. Nate looking low on the inline, popping out forward is McKee in the corner, down low. Big Ben plants his feet, stumbles to the floor, but gets it out. And McMillan with six. Boy, I tell you, McKee has made some phenomenal feeds 
in this period, and the Sonics lead by 15 with 5.20 to go in the second quarter of play. Sonics have put the hammer down on the Kings and have taken the crowd out of the game. Webb to the end line, pull up jumper. Outlet pass to Barrels, here he comes, challenges Richmond into the lane. A uh, little roundhouse right-handed flip, missed it. Tisdale the rebound, up to Richmond. Over to Webb for a three, no. Rebound, poke free, McMillan's got it. McMillan's got Barrels and Conlon with him, a wrap around behind the back dribble, goes off the foot, could not track it down, out of bounds it goes. And the Sacramento Kings will bring it in bounds. Well, the Kings are just getting beat down the floor right now. The Sonics are whipping that ball after made baskets to midcourt. That time, Barrels was in front court when Benjamin rifled the outlet pass from his baseline perch. Here's Simmons, right-hand side from Webb, turns in, 14-footer, got it. Lionel Simmons. Simmons with a half dozen. 439 left, second quarter, 43-32 the score. Sonics lead here by 11. They led by 15, their largest lead a moment ago. McMillan on the point of it to Barrows. He's hampered by a web. Nearly knocked down. Barrows lost the ball, but goes out to retrieve it at the hash mark. Works on. of the Sonics in the period as Michael Cage comes in now for Marty Conlon. Anthony Bonner is in for Wayman Tisdale as well. Derek McKee to the line. 81% on the years. Free throws up. It is good. 10 for Derek. 8 here in the quarter. And the Sonics lead it by 13 at 45 to 32. 4 11 to go in the second period. Mitch Richmond working outside with a dribble. Covered by Pierce. On top, Simmons with it. Checked by Payton and held there. Foul is on Gary Payton. Only the second team foul on the Sonics. Not shooting foul. Kings will bring it in. The Sonics now have Payton and Pierce at the guards. Cage, Benjamin, and McKee on the front line. The Sonics have had that lineup in 14 games. They're 8 6 in those games. I think it was Richmond. Five for three. Mr. Coswell, the foot back tip down. Coswell hanging around the rack, just jammed it right back in there. He's got four. 45 34 the count. Pierce posted up down low, trying to get open. Richmond clinging to him. They skip it to Ricky. Ricky whirls out of there on the wing. Cage comes over to pick. Pierce unleashes one to Benjamin. Turn around. Baseliner missed it, falling away. Coswell screens off Marquis. It went off Derek's arm out of bounds, and the Kings will bring it up. Coswell has 10 rebounds in this first half. For Wayne Coswell. It's going to be a good one. Five rookies on the roster last year. Four were first-round draft choices, including Coswell. Here's Webb. Skips it low. Simmons, double team. Simmons back outside to Webb. Webb. Tip across the left to right hand dribble to the inline. Turned away by McKee. Out to Webb. Three pointer in the air. Missed it. Bonner grabs a long rebound of the corner. Bonner with a right to left hand dribble. Runs to the line. A beautiful reverse off glass up and in for Anthony Bonner. Bonner's first deuce, and here come the Kings. Sonics lead it 45 to 36. 307 to go in the second period. Seattle by nine. The bench did a wonderful job here in the second quarter for Casey Jones. Now let's see what the starters can do as Peyton works it wide to McKee. By post to Benjamin. Benjamin looks at the floor now. And McKee will get it again on the near side. McKee inside the three-point perimeter. Working out there on Simmons. Takes it to the inline. Pull-up jumper swatted away by Coswell and out of bounds. Just as time had expired on the shot clock. They're going to call a shot clock violation on Seattle. And the Kings will take it. 2.44 to go second quarter. The Kings trying to make a run. They were 15 back. They are now within nine as we close near halftime on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. When you want sports, turn to Sports Radio 950 KJR. Get him in there. Roger, he's got to be earning his stuff anyway. Let's talk on the telephone line, though. Jamar, I learn a lot about sports listening to you guys. Let's go talk to Rich Boy in a car phone. Rob, where have you been? How are you, Sidewalk? Live as we continue on Sports Radio 950 KJR. Dave Grothy with you, remember? When you want sports, turn to Sports Radio 950 KJR. 
Ernst beats the competition by 5%. Give me five. Ernst has teamed up with the toughest paint around, Dutch Boy, an official sponsor of the NBA. Ernst and Dutch Boy put you in the paint. And right now, it's specially priced so you can take it to the hoop. Ernst and Dutch Boy are in the paint tough. My entire coaching career has been based on honesty and sincerity. That's why I'm representing sharp copiers from Pacific Office Automation. Because every customer is important, Pacific has one of the most recognized in-house factory service training centers. That ensures quality service after the sale. And there's a total satisfaction guarantee for five years or one million copies, whichever comes last. Take it from me, Chuck Knox. Call Pacific Office Automation today. 45-36 is our count here at the Arco Arena in Sacramento with 2.44 left in the second quarter play. The Sonics have been red hot, Bob. Well, they have. In this period, they're shooting 54% for the ball game. That's brought them up to the 45% level at 17 for 38. Kings at 37%, 14 for 38. But turnovers have been the big story. The Sonics have an extra 12 points on the differential there. And the bench, the Sonic bench, we talked about how well they had done when they came in. 18 to 5, they about scored the King bench. Sonics have used eight King turnovers for 10 points here in the period as Richmond runs the in line. Pull up right hander is good for Mitch Richmond. He's got nine. It's his first basket here in the quarter. The double team Peyton in midcourt. So the Sonics 15 point lead has been whittled away now to seven. 220 left second quarter. Peyton with it. High post Big Ben. Coswell all over him. Benjamin fires a pass inside. Peyton posts up. Step around move. Lays it good. But he walks. Turnover counts to the as the Sonics 11th turnover here in the first half it cost the Sonics a basket as Peyton got deep on little Spud Webb. Well, Gary's had a little trouble getting inside. He's been able to get around Webb okay but other guys have been hovering over him especially Coswell and he's had trouble without height. Seven point lead now for the Kings. Bonner over to Webb. Sideline left down low. It goes to Simmons. He stops. He whirls into the air. He'll fire one over McKee and drops it in. Simmons has got eight. Back come the Kings. 45 to 40. 150 left second quarter play. There's a lot of fight left in the Kings. Kings on the 8-0 run to uh, pretty well wipe out that Sonic 15-point lead here as Casey Jones now will call a 20-second timeout. Some folks here in Sacramento, James and Amy Gallegos from Lacey, Washington, like to say hello and best wishes to the Sonics. And Luke Esser and Phil Stratmeyer of Bellevue are here and say go Huskies. Uh, hey, we have a few more here too. Steve Gerard, Pete Butterfield, and Dave Moe out of Bellevue. And uh, Louise Needy, uh, whose uh, folks are in Kirkland, she's down here rooting. On that last play, as they got inside, why the uh, that was the one where uh, Gary had the uh, problem. That was Simmons no, last. No, that basket. was so. That was Simmons on his uh, Simmons. Yeah, he got great defense down there in the low post. He had, he was double teamed, but he had a little sidestep move to put that ball up. And Simmons, he's shown he's very very tough inside. He's a good scorer. He's a good shooter, averaging 17 per game. Points off the turnover. Sonics still have the edge, 16 to 13. 45-40, the Sonics lead trimmed to five with a minute 35 left in the second quarter. Farrell starts off the McKee pick outside of Benjamin. Swings it out beyond the three-point perimeter. Pierce three on the shot clock, and he comes with a 20-foot hoist. He got it. Ricky Pierce with 12 on the night. Sonics by seven, 47-40. One, two, one left here, second period of play. Richmond calls a set play on the half court. Richmond working on Pierce, picks up the dribble. Bonner pumps out here to the hole, fires one up from the free throw line. He missed it. Benjamin clears it out to Gary Payton. Gary again has doubled out high as Coswell and Webb team up on it. Benjamin now back in the flow as they work it on the far wing. Here's Pierce to the line. He beat his man, switches right to left hand. Missed it, followed up and in by McKee with a left hand. McKee with a south ball. He's got 12. Beautiful follow by Derrick. Sonics by nine. 53 seconds to go, second quarter. Richmond the D, and he comes to the roundhouse right, blocked away by Benjamin, picked up by McKee. Lead pass to Pierce, breaks into four court, straight arms Webb, and banks it up and in. No foul called on Pierce, and that is tonight's Sonics instant replay. Ricky got away with a straight arm that time. 51 to 40 the score. Boy, that was right out of the uh, Walter Payton book of straight arms. That was a beauty. Webb outside from the three point perimeter. Backs, turns, whirls, follow each other, missed it. Air ball, grabbed by Benjamin. Triple teamed inside, dribbles out of pressure, fires the ball up the floor. Richmond picks it up, breaks into forecourt, into the lane. He comes underhand, finger roll up and in. Richmond has 11, 51 to 42. It's a nine point lead now for the Seattle Supersonics. 17 seconds remaining in the first half. Peyton will work for one last shot here. 
Somebody should have come back to help the Knight a little bit more on that last play. Come to the ball when he's triple teamed in backcourt like that. Caden high on the near side, off the pick of Benjamin, slants to the inline, stops, knocks the man down, and the Kings will get it back with three on the shot clock as Webb. Goes Barrow rolling out of bounds. Peyton's second foul. 2.8 seconds remaining, 51-42. Sonics will lead going into the locker room. Webb will get it in backcourt. Webb tripped up, falls, maintains the dribble across midcourt. He will fling one up. He is bumped and knocked down at the buzzer. And there is no whistle, no call. So the Sonics got away with another one there. <laughs> and at half, lead by nine, 51-42 on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the toasted raviolis. Ta-da! Wrong. This is a toasted ravioli. Crispy breaded pasta filled with three Italian cheeses. One of three new spicy finger foods at Jack in the Box. Come on, Sparky. Look at this. with the unexpected twist of Lyman. Hopes your holiday has a little unexpected smile. Well, the Sonics got a 15-point lead in the second quarter play, but the Kings uh, did not quit. They came back, Bob, to close here to within nine at halftime, and Hughes has got to be encouraged by that because the criticism of the Kings this year has been that they've had a tendency to quit in these kind of situations. Well, for the most part, I like what the Sonics are doing tonight. They're playing well. That second unit's playing well. Both teams, a lot of turnovers. Hey, it's the day after Christmas. Nobody got to practice yesterday. Maybe that's it. All right, at half, Sonics up by nine. More in a moment here in Sacramento. 51-42, our count on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. What's the best kept secret along I-5? Where is Mark Sidley Chrysler Plymouth Dodge and Dodge Trucks? Try Smoky Point, exit 206, between Marysville and Mount Vernon. Mark Sidley even has a nationwide toll-free number to call to get the best price on a new Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, or Dodge truck. Mark Sidley has five-star award-winning service with a parts department open until 7 p.m. and Saturdays. And they're the nicest people in the business. Now the secret's out, so come on in to Mark Sidley at Smoky Point and save. David Thompson has it. He puts up a long shot. Goal! And the buzzer! The Sonics win! Great Moments in Sonics History is brought to you by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Lite, taking the country by storm. Seattle was in the midst of a four-game Eastern swing when they met the Washington Bullets in February of 1990. Bullets fan Robin Ficker led the verbal assault, while a 12-footer by Harvey Grant pulled Washington within a point of the Sox. Well, by one, 77-76, Sonics had the lead in the levy. McKee on the wing, covered by Allery, pulls up, 15-footer, off the mark, Polonese the rebound, Olden puts it on the floor, twist free, banks one up and in as he was falling away. Olden has six. McMillan on the point, tosses over to X. X has had the hot hand, 10 of 17, 24 points in the game. X-Man, a long toss, it's good. McDaniel brought rain down with that one. The Sonics and the Bullets would take this game right to the final buzzer. For those of you looking for the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft, in a light beer, we proudly present Cold Filter Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. 16 seconds remaining. 15. Liddell Eccles has been hot. Eccles has picked up 10 points in the ball game. Nine seconds. Eccles outside. Three seconds. It's Eccles inside over to Allen. He skipped it out of bounds. 
Boy, Four what a break. seconds remaining. Four seconds remaining, and he skipped the ball right out of bounds, and the Sonics have possession. Score tied at 92. Dane McMillan with four seconds remaining, looking for a man. The midcourt comes X. McMillan tosses it to McKee. Derek starts up. Two seconds. Derek stops. Long jump shot. Got Sonics win! Sonics win at the buzzer! On the McKee jump shot from McKee! 94-92! The Sonics win on the buzzer shot from Derek. And another great moment in Sonics history. Great Moments in Sonics History has been brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin for real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Northwest industry is on the move, and the people who keep it moving count on Chevron lubricants from Schultz Distributing. When you can't afford to take chances, you can rely on top quality, state-of-the-art lubricants like Chevron Dello multi-grade heavy-duty motor oil and Schultz Distributing's dependable, guaranteed next-day delivery. It's a combination that's been earning a quality reputation for 20 years. Chevron's full line of industry-preferred lubricants and Schultz Distributing, keeping Northwest industry on the move. Exciting Seattle Supersonics for single game tickets to Miami, Philadelphia, and Orlando. Call Ticketmaster at 628-0888. At half, let's review our GTE power play brought to you by GTE, where the power is on. Boy, well, Benjamin had two block shots in the first half of plays. Inside defense was key as Mitch Richmond took it in on one particular series. Benjamin with a block over to McKee, flipped it up into the air, got it into front court where Pierce took it and measured his way in on Webb to bank it up and in. Ricky Pierce had 14 points to lead the Sonics in scoring in that first quarter of play. Big Ben with the block to McKee. The flip up the floor as Pierce was streaking away and watch the straight arm. Walter Payton would be proud. Just flung out the right arm, fending off Webb and banked it up and in. With a score of 51 to 42, we'll return in a moment here on the Sonics Broadcast Network. Casio presents some of the hottest new faces in sports. He's seven foot one standing still, but when he lifts off, that's another story. He goes basket to basket in seconds flat. And energy, he's got plenty to burn. David Robinson and Casio, because Casio watches do more than keep time. They keep you ahead of the game. Four and seven, ten seconds remaining. Peyton brings it into Eddie Johnson. Eddie with three, fires up a three. He got it! Eddie Johnson hit it from the top of the low. Hi, I'm Eddie Johnson of the Seattle Supersonics for Big Brothers of King County. Did you know that right now there are over 300 kids waiting for a Big Brother? To volunteer, call 461-3630. It'll make a man out of him and a kid out of you. What will wise men be bearing this holiday? A Lady Seiko Futurist from Ben Bridge, wrapped in a Benny Bear. The Seiko U.S. Olympic Team Watch Collection. The water-resistant Seiko Sport Tech Chronograph. Wise men and women rely on our expertise. Ben Bridge, the diamond people. Sonic Spotlight is brought to you by Novus Windshield Repair Company. If anyone tells you your windshield has to be replaced, call 1-800-55-NOVUS first. It can almost always be repaired. I'm Bob Blackburn for Sonic Spotlight. The Sonics enter the 1970-71 season with a lot of talent on their roster. One of the top reserves for Seattle was center Zayd Abdul-Aziz, who may be more familiar to fans as Don Smith. 
Aziz had two years of NBA experience before coming to Seattle, and he found himself surrounded by a good group of players. Oh boy, I just got so many memories. Just uh, being around Lenny Wilkins and Dick Snyder and uh, the original Sonics, uh, Fred Brown, and just so many great memories of the Sonics. Zayt averaged better than 12 points a game in his first two years with the Sonics. He demonstrated a nice outside shooting touch for a big man, and he held his own doing the cleanup work under the boards. Zayt had a number of favorite moments of the Sonics, including an overtime thriller against Cincinnati in January of 1971. Some people still talk about the, the six points in the last uh, 20 seconds or so. That was a highlight. When we, uh, we were down uh, six points, we came back and tied the score within 30 seconds. That was, a great, that was against the old Cincinnati uh, Kansas City Royals. Yeah, and I, that was quite, it was kind of miraculous. Aziz spent his third and final year with the Sonics in 1975 after three seasons with Houston. Today, he's a Puget Sound resident and works not too far from the Kingdom. I work right across the street, and I work at Evergreen Treatment Center, and I'm a registered counselor, and I live on Vashon Island, and I have five children and a wonderful wife. Zaid Abdul Aziz, one of the great names in Sonic's history. For Sonic Spotlight, I'm Bob Blackburn. Sonic Spotlight has been brought to you by Novus Windshield Repair Company. <laughs> If you're not on the Horizon Shuttle, think of what you're missing. With flights every hour between Seattle and Spokane, you're never late for a Horizon Shuttle. Just a little early for the next. My life is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Actually, I have no life of my own. Don't put that. <laughs> and I'm thankful for SeaFirst in that I have never had to arrange my schedule around the bank. It's great to be able to do my banking when I go grocery shopping. That helps a lot. It's fantastic that, that the bank keeps the hours that, that it does. Uh, SeaFirst is available when I need them, and that's been very important to me. Isn't it time for you to switch? It's the Dodge Drive for the Gold Sales Drive. Own Shadow America for only $74.69, thanks to a thousand cash back. Drive it right now. On Caravan, get 500 cash back, and you can get air at no extra charge. Drive it right now. Up to $2,000 cash back on select Dodge trucks, and package savings up to $2,683. Right now, get great deals at your local Northwest Dodge dealer. Sonics basketball is being brought to you by Safeway. They take service personally. Isuzu, right on the money for the Northwest. Ernst and Dutch Boy, teaming up to keep you in the paint. Always the right price, always. Horizon Airlines, Seattle to Spokane every hour, Seattle to Portland every half hour. Les Schwab, their business is earning your trust. Budget rent a car, the smart money is on budget. City University, your window to a world of opportunity. Valley's Pack West with eight locations in the Puget Sound area. And by Casio, America's best-selling sport watches. 51-42 is our halftime score, and before we start the third quarter, let's take a look at the Dutch boy in the paint stats. Dutch boy, for the look that lasts. We mentioned the Kings dead last in the NBA in rebounding. The Sonics first in rebounding percentage. Kings have five blocks. The Sonics with four. The Kings were led by Lionel Simmons with two, and Tisdale had two blocks as well. The Sonics got two from Benoit Benjamin. Rebounding 22-21 right now. The Sonics leading the Kings, and the Sonics 13-4 and without rebounding their opposition. Uh, the other numbers, Bob? Well, let's take a look and see how the scoring has gone, the shooting percentages and things like that. The Sonics have a slight edge there. Uh, they've been hitting at 48% and the Kings at 38%. Seattle with three more field goals. At the foul line, Sonics and Ed's there 10 for 13 and the Kings 7 for 10, both about the same percentage. Sonics a little higher. Assists, the Sonics have 11, 9 for the Kings and leading the Sonics and assists. We have uh, Dana Barros with a 3 and Derek McKee with 3. Turnovers, the Sonics 13 and the Kings 14. So. It really turned out to be a little bit of a sloppy first half, to be honest with you. Some of that defense, some of it simply unforced errors. Now, Sonics individually, Ricky Pierce, 14 points, and Ricky's had an excellent 6-for-9 seat shooting. Derek McKee has 12 points. Dana Barris has 9. 
And Dana got that uh, three-point shot uh, going here, and he also made a couple of more field goals, and McMillan has six, and Nate continues to score well. He had been shooting 68% in the four games up to this one tonight, and Nate in the first half this evening hit three out of four, so he is still shooting the ball very well. Now, taking a look at the uh, Sacramento scoring for the first half, they only have one man in double-figure scoring as they're working on that net again here. We have uh, 11 for Mitch Richmond, uh, Simmons and Webb with eight, and Tisdale with six. Now, we might mention Michael Cage has only two points tonight and three rebounds, but I'll tell you one thing he has done. He has kept that Wayman Tisdale busy, and Tisdale, a big scorer, has hit only three out of nine shots, and he missed six of his last seven. So while Cage may not be putting some of those numbers up, he is giving Tisdale fits out there as far as some defense concern. concerned. And Kevin, you called a couple late in the in the second quarter. For those fans who think the Sonics never get a break on the officiating, yes, Ricky Pierce straight-armed his man, went under the basket, got a layup, and right at the end of the half, yes, Nate Barris knocked, uh, wow. uh, Webb. knocked Webb. Knocked him into tomorrow. Right, no, right on the floor at the mid-court line, and there was no call at all. So the Sonics did get by with a couple that time. No question. And a <laughs> wiped him out. <laughs> Sonic's got a break there. It was right in front of Greg, the Rat Willard, and he did not make the call. And, uh, well, it's, hey, I guess that's what, it, what you need when you're on the road. You're trying to snap an eight-game road losing streak, and you're 5-9 and nine on the year out on the road. This half of Sonic's basketball being brought to you in part by Subaru. It's what to drive. Well, it's just as well they didn't call it because it would have been the third foul on Gary Payton, and you don't need to have that going into the second half. We might say Nate McMillan did play well in the first half today, did not show any signs of a full groin. The second unit played extremely well for the Sonics when they were in there. So the Sonics showing some depth tonight. Nate says the, the best part about being hurt is the fact that he's in the Whirlpool all the time. He says he loves that. <laughs> he's in the Whirlpool this morning uh, during shoot-around and in the Whirlpool uh, before tonight's contest. Here's Richmond near side now as we get the third quarter play. Kings with it. Kings 7 and 18 on the year. They are 6 and 5 here at home. Here's Webb outside. The Kings have lost five straight out on the road. Webb up, fake, leans in on Peyton inside Tisdale. Bar angle J from 15 rolls off. Peyton the rebound. Gary across midcourt. As usual, the jersey hang <laughs> hanging out on the back of the pants. Backs down on Webb, picks it up, skips it outside to Pierce. Ricky looking on side for McKee. He's open. The pass in there from Peyton to McKee is batted away, however, on the overplay, and Richmond takes it. Mitch Richmond down the flank, bumps it low. The back step, left-hander to the glass for Tisdale, off glass and missed it. Didn't hit iron, he wanted a foul, won't get it. McKee will bring it out of backcourt, long lead pass off the dribble to Pierce, plants his feet up with the J, off the back rim, grabbed by Webb. He wants to slow it up now. Spud Webb and his teammates turned the ball over 14 times in the first half for 16 Sonic points. Eight for 10 in the second quarter. Here's Webb out on the point. Two-man play to Richmond. Turns, faces up, takes Pierce inside, splits the D, and Peyton and Pierce drew the foul. Leg whip by Ricky, actually by Gary Peyton. That's his third, and it will send Mitch Richmond to the free throw line. Gary got caught kind of in no man's land that time. He didn't know whether to go double team, which he's done a very effective job on tonight, doing helping out down low a lot. He wanted to maybe go back out his man. Webbed in him, and he saw Richmond definitely come in. Boom, he went back, got the knee in the way, and there was the foul. Mitch Richmond, number eight in the league in scoring at 23.7 points per ball game, tosses this one up and in. He's got 12 points on the night. Boy, in that first half, the backcourt tandem of Webb and Richmond really held in check collectively. They were 7 out of 20 from the field. Richmond hits both free throws. 13 for Richmond, who's an 84 percenter up there at this drive. 10-4-4 left third quarter. Sonics by 7, 51-44. Backpedaling down the flank, Payton. Whips a pass out on top to McKee. Holds the ball high over the left hand. Pops it with the left hand like a grapefruit. Backs down, cross level dribble on Simmons into the lane. Lost it. McKee goes back to pick it up. Pops it low to Big Ben. The swiveling hook of five. It rolls off. Coswell with the rebound. A swiveling brick, I guess you could say. As that one came bounding out. On the near side, it is Richmond planted for three. He'll take it. He nailed it. Mitch Richmond's hit a couple of three-point bombs here in this ball game. He's got 16, and suddenly the Kings are back into this game at 51 to 46 after the Sonics led by 15 back in the second quarter. 10:03 left, second quarter play. It's a four-point lead now for the Sonics. Pierce, right hand side of the key, tosses over to Cage, left hand side of the key, down low to Payton. 
The reverse pivot. Double teamed out to McKee. No look feed over to Pierce. Open on the baseline. Rolls it up. Missed it. Rebound Benjamin. Out to Ricky. Reloads. 15 foot right side. Missed it. Rebound Payton. Put back. Up and in. Gary Payton on the putback attempt scores his first basket of the night. And the Sonics lead by 6, 53 to 47. 9 3 7 left here in the second period. Spud Webb now will begin things. High on the right. Webb. Checked by Payton, drops it low, spinning away from the over uh, play of Pierce as Simmons will take it to the glass and bank it up and in. Lionel's got 10 perfect pass in there from Webb that time. 9-19 to go, third quarter, 53-49. Down on top, Benjamin over to Payton, down low to Pierce, hits the cutting Payton, perches the ball on the left side, whips it up with that left hand up and in. Nice play from Gary Payton who extended the left hand away from the defender. Now Richmond will begin things, 55-49 is six point. Sacramento lead, nine minutes to go, second period. Oh, Out high as Webb drops it low again. Simmons pokes it up again. He turns, fires over Pierce, and banks it up and in. Simmons has 12, and they found a nice little cozy two-man play down there. As Pierce has been forced to switch over on Simmons twice. And Simmons has beaten him the last two trips down, 55-51. Here's a pass inside of Benjamin. Peyton tried to force it, tapped away by Coswell. Picked up by Peyton into the lane. The dish to Cage for the J is good. Michael Cage with four points. Gary Payton makes the recovery in time to assist Cage, and the Sonics are on top by six with 8.28 to go. Third quarter play. Webb circles off the Tisdale pick, hesitation dribble with a left hand, turned away on a jump switch covered by Cage. Webb outside now sprints into the lane, draws the deep, dishes into Tisdale for the easy left-handed flush. Tisdale's got eight. 57-53, Kings hanging in there with 8.11 to go in the second period of play. Now out of backcourt is Gary Payton as Rex Hughes coaches his ball club. No quit in the Kings tonight. That's been the criticism of them, of them so far this year. Payton, sidearms a pass to Pierce. Ten on the shot clock for Ricky. Unleashes a dart over to McKee. He'll soft touch the 18-footer up there. No go. Rebound volleyed outside. Simmons hustling for it in midcourt. Here he comes right at us. Ball the flex from the L train out of bounds. And the Sonics will swing it in bounds. Few kids around the country got the L train for Christmas, huh? Our little guy got a train. What about what about you, Bob? Do you get a train for Christmas? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I play with my grandkids. <laughs> that counts. Fate load of Pierce, and he comes. Nice reverse in traffic. Ricky Pierce switching left to right hand. He's got 16 points. 59-53. It's a six-point lead now for the Sonics. 7-2-7 left, second period. Mitch Richmond acquired as the season began for Golden State. Stocks him in the left hand. A hard dribble switches left to right. And again, it's a reverse for Richmond. Mitch Richmond's got 18 points. Nobody is coming over to pick him up from the weak side. And that allows Richmond to roam to the glass. Pierce is funneling his man to the baseline. But there's no baseline help, Bob. And that backcourt help, by the way. And we, we, we expected, well, Casey Jones not happy right now. We expected a good scoring match. It's 18 to 16 in favor of Richmond over Pierce at the moment. Seven minutes remaining. Third quarter, Pierce, one-on-one -on -one to Richmond. Backs him down into the lane. Outside of Benjamin, a full head of steam from 15. Leans into the jumper, missed it. Payton with a rebound. He averts Webb and Coswell. Dribbles out of pressure to the sideline. Hands off to Pierce. Circles wide with a roundhouse hook into the air. Flips it up and in. 18 to 18 now between Richmond and Pierce. Yeah. And Ricky getting the Sonics on top by six. Pierce coming from behind on Richmond to flex the ball away, and the foul is called on Ricky Pierce in forecourt. That is the second foul on Ricky. Be a non-shooting foul with 646 left in the second. A timeout is called by the Kings. The score, 61 to 55. Sonics lead by six here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Most car companies make a distinction between a car and its driver. But in the Volkswagen Passat GL, they are one. One in the precision of its responsiveness. The way German engineering translates your every move. It's the unique coming together we call Fahrvergnügen. And that's where we make our distinction. Test drive a 92 Passat today at your Puget Sound Volkswagen dealers. Captain Hook will never miss one Coke. Shots. The Lost Boys could be anywhere. Oh, no! It's Gillette presents Sensor, the system 
the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. 6.46 left in the third, and the Sonics lead by half dozen at 61.55 here in the Arco. Well, they're fortunate they've got more shots. They're not hitting the ball as well. They're 5 for 11 at 45%. The Kings 5 for 7 at 71%. Kings got a little bit of a lead, and since then it's just been kind of horse and horse. They've just been stair-stepping up, and right now it's the Sonics by 6. Mitch Richmond will swing it at bounds. Dwayne Shinsey is a 7-footer, second-year player from Florida. Now in the lineup. Along with Tisdale and Simmons on the front line, Webb and Richmond are the guards. Richmond picks up the dribble, two-man play to Simmons. Squares off, faces off on of McKee, double team. Dr. Tisdale, 15-footer, floats it up, and he got it. Tisdale's got 10. Sonics are coming over to double Simmons on the flank. That leaves Tisdale open from 15 on the free throw line. Four-point lead now for Seattle, 6-2-4 left third quarter. Baden pumps it to Pierce in the corner, double team by Simmons and Webb. Webb comes over the top, strips Ricky the ball. Ricky picks it back up. Nice pass in line right to Baden over the cap. A beautiful darting jam with two hands as he managed to maneuver by Tisdale. Sean Kemp with five. Peyton set him up with the assist. It's a six-point lead off for Seattle. 6-0-4 left first half play. Get back in the lineup, played four minutes in the first half. Double team to Simmons, swings it out here near side. Webb slants in, splits the D up on him with the left hand. Spud Webb delivers the good. Darting in traffic. Peyton will hurry it up down the flank. Seattle by four, 5-4-6 five, four, left third quarter. Peyton outside, stands still dribble, pumps it off the Pierce pick, gives it back to Ricky, side line left, back to Peyton on the cut to the hole, stop, hooks one up over Cincius, and it goes. Gary Peyton got the roll, he's got six. Good little maneuver there, he and Pierce with a two-man. Six-point lead now for the Sonics, 5-28 remaining, third quarter tomorrow night, the Sonics and the Celtics in the kingdom. Celtics have the night off, they're resting in Seattle. Double team down low, Simmons to 10, there he is, 15 again, bang. Tisdale with 12. Twice they've hooked up on that play now as the Sonics come over to double Simmons. 65-61, 5-11 to go, third quarter. Peyton appears in the corner, drops it low to McKee. McKee swivels, fires in the face of Richmond, missed it, rebound. Gary Payton in the lane, the left-hander put back from eight feet is beautiful. Gary Payton has got eight. He did not play well in the first half, but he has come alive in this third quarter, particularly on the glass. He's got eight points. 67-61, it's a six-point Sonic lead. Simmons near flank. Down low, Shintzius back, turns the up-swinging hook from 10, low go. Weak side rebound, trapped by Pierce, 4-4-1 left, third quarter. Here's Pitty Patcher dribble down the flank over to Kemp, drop step, spin, trapped inside, threw it away. Right to Richmond, up to Webb, they'll go alone to the hole and lay it up and down. Webb has got 10. How many times have we seen Sean do that? Well, he's having trouble getting into the rhythm tonight. This first time back after a long time out. He just needs playing time right now. 4.21 left in the third quarter. 4.67-63 lead for Seattle. Sonic basketball. Pierce sideline left. Covered by Simmons. Feathers it low to McKee. Holds the ball up high over the head. Covered by the 6-5 Richmond. Back in the corner to Pierce. Slants off. Double team leans in. 12-footer. No go. Rebound. Shinsey. His outlet pass to Sloppy, one touch pass out of backcourt to Webb, big collision ahead to Richmond. Underhands to Simmons to the glass, lays it up and in. Simmons with 14, and the Sonics lead is a deuce. 67 to 65, 350 left in the third. We have a ball game again as the Sonics call a 20-second timeout, and the crowd now very much into this ball game. There's that last play by Mitch Richmond. Nice feed off. Coming in under the left side, uh, Lionel Simmons. I tell you, Simmons has been strong. He has picked up. He has hit his last seven shots in the ballgame, according to my tabulation. Missed his first two tonight, but he's been getting some good shots. We'd like to remind you, folks, 24 hours from now, the kingdom will be alive with the sound of the fans. And, boy, they could fill them out there. And there are still a lot of good seats available as Boston is coming to town for its one visit this year with Larry Bird and gang. And, of course, you know what the Celtics did to the Sonics back in Boston a few weeks ago. The Sonics will be lying in the weeds. On radio, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Lionel Simmons will get a breather. Dennis Hobson comes in with Dwayne Shinsius, the second unit for Rex Hughes, the new coach of the Sacramento Kings. 67 65, 349 left third quarter play. The Sonics at half led by nine on the strength of a 15 point lead that they had 
in that second quarter, but it's been all the Kings here in the third. And in fact, Gary Payton has scored eight of the Sonics' 16 points here in this third quarter of play. Payton remains on the floor with McKee Pierce, Kemp, Cage. And the Kings, Richmond, and Webb the guards. Bonner, Tisdale, and Schintz is the front line. Sonics, 8 of 16, 50% in the third quarter, but the Kings have been hot, hot, hot. 10 of 13, a sizzling 77% here in the third period. The Kings have come back. They're within two, Sonic basketball. Pierce off the McKee pick, forced wide, reaching in with Simmons. There's contact made. The foul is called on Lionel Simmons. Simmons standing over Ricky Pierce, picks up his first team foul number one on the Kings. Well, I will say one thing. At Sacramento, Lark Hughes taking over as coach is really making an effort tonight at both ends of the court. They're playing very rough physical defense, as you can see on that last play. McKee will bring it in bounds to Gary Payton. Stands outside, motionless, looking and waiting for the offense to set. Pierce comes off the pick, gets it, swings it back to Gary, plants his feet in the lane, stripped to the ball. Gary got it back, leans back in the lane, eight-footer, no goal. Rebound to Tisdale. And here are the Kings with a chance to tie this tilt. And 3.14 remaining in the third quarter. They've got Webb outside off the pick of Tisdale, forced to the inline. Payton slows Webb, he picks up his dribble, skips it, hops and posts it up, forces up a shot, a scoop shot off the mark. Rebound volleyed outside, Cage and Tisdale rumble for it. Tisdale beat him to the ball at midcourt. And the Kings have it. Webb, a crossover dribble into the lane. Dumps it outside the bottom. Bonner with 16 on the shot clock, forces his way to the hole up in the roundhouse, right missed it. Rebound volley to Tisdale, outside to Webb. Kings say, hey, what's the hurry? 2.43 left third quarter, we've got the crowd back in the game. Webb wants to set it up, Lloyd goes to Tiz, he turns, he fires, and we are tied at 67 all. 14 points for Tisdale, 67 all the score with 2.29 left in the third quarter of play. The Kings on a mini 6-0 run of tied it now. Here is Kemp. On the sideline, looking low for McKee. Shifts it outside to Cage. Over to Payton, posted up low on Webb. He turns in the lane, blocked by Shinsey. It's picked up by Gary. Underhands it up, missed it. Rebound, Kemp up and in. He is fouled, and Sean will go to the line. And that basket's going to count, too. So Kemp with a chance at a three-point play, and we have a timeout called here by the Sonics. 69-67, Sonics by a deuce. 2-11 to go, second quarter. Timeout here in Sacramento on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. For those of you looking for the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft in a light beer, we proudly present cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. Have you ever wondered just what flying is coming to? Hi, I'm your talking ticket. Oh. Do you have baggage? Oh, yes. Hi, I'm your talking ticket. Do you have baggage? I don't have any baggage. <laughs> Please enter the aircraft to the left. Hi, welcome aboard. Now let's adjust our seatbelt. Please put your seat back in a fully upright position. At Alaska Airlines, our people go out of their way to show you they're only human. Get the advantage at your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Scores around the NBA on the Old Spice scoreboard. San Antonio snaps New York's 11-game home winning streak. Robinson 31. The Spurs win at 118-89. Houston at New Jersey tonight. Jersey winning at 99-93. Detroit was in Orlando tonight. Pistons win at 112-100 over Orlando. Chicago got 34 from Jordan. They won in Atlanta despite Dominique's 39. 122-111. Cleveland at Milwaukee. Philadelphia beat Indiana 113-110. Those old finals in the NBA on the old Spice scoreboard. Cleveland over Milwaukee 111-94. Golden State a winner over Denver 110-100. Mullen at 31 in that ball game. Here in Sacramento, the Sonics on top by three as Sean Kemp hits a free throw. He's got a three-point play on that one, and the Kings bring it back. Hobson turns down low, pivots. Kemp comes over to strike the shot away. Shinsius had a second shot at it. Kemp came up to tie him, 
in the air for his first foul, and Shinsius will head to the free throw line. Tony Hobson, I think, feels like he has to get something done to this team, and he, again, he, he leans in and forces a shot that time, but it, coming across very nicely to block the initial shot was Kemp, but Shinsius on the putback got fouled and goes up for two. Dwayne Shinsius has played in 17 games, averaging the 15 minutes. He hits the free throw. He was a first-round draft choice of the San Antonio Spurs. Dwayne, second one up. Shinsius with four. Two big free throws, pulling the Tings within one of the Sonics at 70-69. Payton sprints out of backcourt. Slowed on the wing by Hobson. They want to work a two-man play. Payton brings over McKee for the pick. Circles into the lane. Trying to loop one up, and Hobson grabbed it. Well, let's, the question is, was it a pass-off, which is what it looked like to me, or were the officials sent him to the line? They will send Gary to the line. Well, Payton's done a good job penetrating. Oh, that was a shot as he got grabbed over the right arm, put up the shot with the left arm. Didn't hurt the shooting arm, but they sure got him on the other one, and Gary has a chance for two. Let's see if he's been practicing his free throws. Gary has nine points all here in this third quarter of play. Boy, if it were not for Gary, the Sacramento Kings would have a lead right now. Peyton did not play well at all in the first half, but he has come alive here in this third quarter with ten points. 72-69, it is a three-point lead for Seattle with 132 left in the third quarter. Last across midcourt, checked by Dana Farrell, south beyond the three-point perimeter. Jimmy Last, number one in the NBA in three-point percentage last year. Stops beyond the three-point perimeter, not gives to Tisdale. Skips it low, spinning by Peyton as Hobson into the lane. He is knocked down to the floor. McKee's got the ball, breaks out of backcourt, and nearly trampled Hobson on his break out of the backcourt. Hands to Peyton over to Kemp, and he leans to the left side. He muscles it up and in. And Sean Kemp has got 20, and Dennis Hobson is getting a technical foul, and he will be ejected yeah, he's out not, from the game. Yeah, he's out now. You knew he was going to go out when he kept talking right in the face of the official after the first tee was called. I tell you, I think Hobson has a case for a foul not having been called, but there's no question. All right, let's, uh, on television, let's see the play. Well, I'm not so sure. Maybe he did just fall down. I don't think he got hit that hard. Yeah, was, Kemp got him with a body. That's a how little, he got little, there on the floor. Little contact, but it wasn't a real flagrant type thing. Well, it was enough to, enough to send him to the deck, apparently. Sure. I think he's got a good point. I think he was manhandled in there, but he's ejected from the game. He got to know when to draw the line. Farrell hits the free throw. He's got 10. Second one up, he's got 11. And with the technical foul shots, Farrell has put the Sonics up by 6, 75, 69. The crowd is all over. Greg... The Rat Willard, 105 to go here in the third quarter of play. Well, Lyle Simmons will come back in now. No, this game has really gotten a little bit rough. It really has. <laughs> well, because Sacramento is trying hard. They want to please their coach. They want to please the fans. They want to snap their five-game losing streak. Yeah, the Kings uh, felt like they've taken some shots tonight on their home court that have not been whistled for fouls. And they have. Richmond is double teamed on the near side. Hands off to Shitsi. It's quickly over to Simmons. Shakes left, moves right. Outside to Richmond. Head of the key, Jay. Let it go, Mitch. He missed it. Rims off into the hands of Sean Kemp. Man, has he come alive. Outlet pass to Peyton, three on two. Over to Conlon, off the wing. Bears down on the hole, and he walks to the basketball. You mentioned Kemp. He has come up with 10.7 here in the quarter. So Sean, after the lengthy absence since the 12th of December in New York, has come back to play pretty, pretty well here in this third period. 34 seconds remaining, third quarter. 76-69, Sonics by seven. Less on the point, works with a dribble, covered by Barrow, south beyond the line. Payton trying to deny Rich with the ball. Richmond finally gets a turn, swivels, 21-footer off the backside over the goal stanchion, out of bounds. Sonics will take it with 22 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Seattle hopefully will calmly work for the last shot here in the quarter. Apparently we had lost our picture for a moment and, uh, well, for three minutes. So we're back now. We appreciate your patience. Sonics lead it, 76-69, 13 seconds remaining, third quarter, Payton off the common pick, right up the shoot, into the lane, switches right to left hand, missed it, kept the follow, tip jam is off the mark, but the foul is drawn inside, and listen to this crowd now, as the foul is called on Anthony Bonner up on the rack is first. Now, interesting note here, Kevin, with 7.9 seconds left in the third quarter, remember those big eight turnovers that the uh, Kings had in the second quarter, they've had no turnovers, now Payton comes into the lane, Goes up, got the shot off. He didn't get fouled, but Kemp followed. Yeah, and he got hit chest to chest right that time by Schitz as he'll go to the line. So Sean Kemp steps up with seven in the quarter, ten for the game, and the free throws up and off the mark. Kemp has only played now in nine games. Remember, in the eight games that he had played previous to that, he averaged 29 minutes a game, 17.7 rebounds, nearly two block shots per game. Second free throw, got it. He's got 11, eight in the period. 
Kings bring it in, trailing by eight, 77, 69, seven seconds remaining in the third. Look out for Les, he's an excellent three-point shooter. He'll bring it up the floor, hands off to Bonner. Bonner shakes to the inline, Conlon shut him off. Bonner stops, leans, did not get off the shot in time, and that ends the third quarter of play. With the Sonics on a 7-0 run, taking the 8.77-69 lead into the fourth quarter. And we'll have that for you when we return on our simulcast in a moment on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Throwing out something that's broken doesn't always make sense, especially when it comes to a broken windshield. Because Novus can repair up to 75% of all damaged windshields without replacing them. Our patented process is fast, guaranteed, and usually free, since most insurance companies will pay for the repair. Novus Windshield Repair. Broken nail. Because some things just shouldn't be replaced. We will now demonstrate the toasted ravioli. Thank you. Sorry, this is a toasted ravioli. Crispy breaded pasta filled with three Italian cheeses. One of three new spicy finger foods at Jack in the Box. This is a mini chimichanga. This is a mini chimichanga. This is a mini chimichanga. Mini chimichanga. What? This is a mini chimichanga. Chicken, cheddar, and Monterey Jack. One of three new spicy finger foods at Jack in the Box. It happens every summer all across Washington State. More than 10,000 kids learn basketball from the superstars. And hoops are only part of the program. The big message is stay in school, stay off drugs, and do your best. It's called the Seafirst Sonics Jam and Hoops Camp. Seafirst is proud to organize and sponsor these free camps. We can't imagine a better investment. Casio presents some of the hottest new faces in sports. He's seven foot one standing still, but when he lifts off, that's another story. He goes basket to basket in seconds flat. And energy, he's got plenty to burn. David Robinson and Casio, because Casio watches do more than keep time. They keep you ahead of the game. 77-69 as we head to the fourth quarter of play. The Sonics leading by eight. Gary Payton, who had all ten of his points in the third quarter of play, will bring the ball up. Marty Collin has seen some time tonight. Collin out to Dana Barrows. Wide on the right side in his camp. Swivels away from Bonner. Tried to skip it low to Collin. He lost it. Ball batted to the inline and a loose ball foul called on the Sonics. Kings will get it back. Their first possession here of the fourth period for Seattle up by eight. Sonics have their 17th turnover of the game, and again, the Kings have not had one in this half, so Kings have at least taken care of the ball in this half, although the Sonics have been able to get that eight-point lead on them. Here is Les now. Pumps it ahead to Simmons. Simmons covered by Conlon. Out to Les. Plants his feet. Fires. He's standing astride the three-point perimeter when he hit it. Basket is good for Jimmy Les. And the Sonics lead is 677 to 71. 11-2-3 left here. Fourth quarter play. Outside, McMillan works with it. Nate McMillan on the point, checked by Mitch Richmond. McMillan looking for Barrows, coming off the Conlon pick, he'll get it, but Les negotiated over the screen. Now Barrows will pump a load of Conlon's great up, and it goes right by Simmons. Simmons standing there looking down at his sneakers as Conlon lays it up and in. Conlon put a major league head and shoulder fake on Simmons, and he bit hook, line, and sinker. Eight-point lead now for Sonics. 10.58 to go fourth quarter. The outside, Les works with it. Right arm entry pass, skips it to Simmons, double team, back pedals into the corner outside of Richmond. Open from three-point range, juggled it. Now he's forced to drive inside. The finger roll is up. It is blocked by Benjamin, and the basket will count on the goal end by Big Ben. 20 points for Mitch Richmond on the night. Well, we mentioned Gary Payton. He was four of eight in that third quarter. He had five rebounds, and he had 10 points as well, all in that third quarter of play. He played well. He's on the bench now as McMillan now will Bring the Sonics up. Fires one outside. Barros with a three-pointer. He's hit one already tonight. He nailed another one. Dana Barros with 14 points. The bench has been a key with Barros and Kemp combining for 25 points. You add McMillan six points. You've got great bench production. Mitch Richmond hoists a three. Richmond comes right down the shoot with a three. He's got 23 on the night. He's hit three three-pointers. 82-76, a six-point Sonic lead. 10-11 to go in the ball game. McMillan on the point. Drops it low to Kemp. His man Bonner slipped. Kemp penetrates inside, soft touches an eight-footer up there. It rolls off the front side. Big Ben is there to tap it up and in. 
Benjamin on the putback. He has seven. 84-76. Eight-point Sonic lead. 9.57 to go. Last in with a left-hand dribble. Draws the D. Dumps it over to Simmons. Up he steps for the jam. Right now, the L train delivers the goods. He's got 16. The Sonics lead is a half dozen. 84-78, 9-4-4, left fourth quarter. Outside, McMillan gets a screen from Conlon. Now Conlon backs off. McMillan 101, backs Richmond down, heads to Kemp. Kemp spurts over, gets the ball, hands off to McMillan, screens for Navy, circles off the pick into the lane, turns, fires under the guard of Richmond, drew the foul. McMillan will go to the line for two as Richmond singing the blues. That is the second foul on Mitch. Yeah, you mentioned that Simmons again a moment ago when he made that shot. You recall earlier I said he had made his, he had missed his first two tonight. He has now made eight in a row. He has been working well, getting a lot of inside shots. So they've got the, they're getting the ball nicely inside to Simmons. Richmond's third foul as McMillan goes to the line and fires the free throw up and just nicked the iron. It came up short. That was a brick, Nick. Uh, Nate. <laughs> Lionel Simmons is chatting good naturedly with uh, Marty Conlon at midcourt. Simmons is saying. You put a big-time head and shoulder fake on me, Marty. You embarrassed me. What did you do that for? McMillan hits the free throw. So Nate splits the pair. He's got seven. 85, 78 to score. Here comes Richmond. A determined drive. He's fouled outside beyond the three-point line by Nate McMillan. Nate will reach it in. That was like trying to stop a run away Amtrak train that time. Tell you one thing, we're seeing some effort tonight. If the Sonics can, uh, can smooth out the game a little bit and get a little, uh, keep this effort going tomorrow night against Boston, it'll help. Second team foul on the Sonics. Richmond on the point, drops it low. Simmons backs in, reverse pivot, fires off the fadeaway Jay in the lane. Missed it. Rebound took a crazy kick off the iron. Kemp grabs a rebound. The outlet pass to Nate McMillan. Nate works in the forecourt, letting the flow clear, and the Sonics set up on the offensive end. Now they flip it out to Barrels on the set. Kemp comes out to pick. Barrels brings his man off the screen, stops, delivers the goods. Kemp's roll to the hole. Up he comes. Makes it up and in. He threw the foul. And Sean Kemp will go to the line. Pretty play executed there by Barrels and Kemp on the pick and roll. The two-man job. Kemp's called a timeout with 9.04 to go in the game. And the Sonics leading here by 9 at 87 to 78 here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. I'm sure you work in an office. It's only 8 o'clock. What do you mean 8? But you live on the phone, which is why you should know about Centronet service from GTE. With Centronet, you get the features and flexibility of the most sophisticated business telephone system. Not the high cost of one. It's really, really difficult for me right now. Because while you spend most of your time on the phone, there's no need to spend most of your money. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. It's the right time for big year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the Isuzu Rodeo 4x4 with an anti-lock brake system standard during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Isuzu Rodeo, right on the money for the Northwest. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Sonics lead it here, 87-78, 9.04 to go here in the fourth quarter of play, and the bench has been masterful tonight, Bob. Well, I think they have about 34 points, something like that right now. They've done an excellent job, and as we mentioned before, this has been their strength, 33-9, to and this is very important because guys like Dana Burris and these guys, the Sonics need them to get back that depth that they had earlier. Now, they're getting their injured players back gradually. They should be at full strength here in about another week or week and a half. John Kemp, who did not dress for the last six games due to that severely lacerated right hand, misses the free throw. He has 13 points. He's up to six rebounds tonight, and Kemp is at five of eight from the field, three of five from the line. Richmond on the near point, skips it outside, Tisdale handles it. Trap picks up his dribble, now back to Richmond. The entry pass comes to Simmons, he turns to the line, flares one up over Conlon, missed it. Benjamin the rebound, Big Ben is up to ten boards on the night. Sonics out of backcourt, Nate McMillan with it. Over to Conlon, open baseliner, pull it up, Marty, missed it. Rebound, Richmond, or I should say Tisdale with a rebound. Now Webb will roll that draw, uh, dribble up the wing. 
drops it low. Tisdale, or Simmons again posted up. His pass out to the point to Tisdale, intercepted by McMillan. He read that play beautifully. McMillan doesn't like the numbers. He'll slow it up, looking for a trailer. Barrels pops out off the Benjamin pick. They'll take it high on the near side. Bud Webb is with him. Sonics lead 87-78. 8-12 to go fourth quarter. Barrels forced out wide, head of the key over to Conlon. Conlon on the far side, drops it on the low blocks with it as Benjamin. Big Ben with four on the shot clock. Nice pass inside. Conlon trapped. His hook shot up. Blocked off Coswell's hand. Hit the rim. His outlet hit Tiswell on the back. Barrels picks it up and nails a three. 17 for Dana Barrels. Two straight three-pointers. Tisdale was not looking for the outlet, and Coswell hit him right in the back with a pass. 90 to 78. It's a 12-point Sonic lead. 7-4-4 left in the ball game. Simmons double teamed outside the web. Pass up a three. He got the three-pointer. 13 now for Spud Webb. 90-81, a nine-point Sonic lead. 7-3-2 left in the ball game. Barrels works on Webb. Drops it low. Kim back. Turns in the lane, fires over Tisdale. This one rocks off the iron. Kemp tracked down the rebound, tapped it up and in. Knees is saying that he went into the cylinder to get it. And we'll get another look at it here on a simulcast. Well, the guy who called it was clear out at center court. The ball goes up on the rim. It's bouncing around. It comes down. Okay. I, I think it was outside the cylinder. The guy from center court just had the bad angle on it and couldn't tell. 90-81. Yeah, it was a close one. 7-17 to go fourth quarter. The point being, Kemp did a tremendous job to follow that shot. Here's Richmond on the point. And we've got a whistle off the ball. And I think we've got a legal defense played on the Sonics. We do. It's a warning. The hit. first violation was 7-10 left in the game and Seattle leading by nine. Yeah, when Dana hit that last three-point shot, Kevin, if my numbers over the last two games are correct, Dana's hit his last five three-point shots in a row now. He's getting the range on that. 17 points for Barrows tonight. Conlon comes off, and the Sonics send in Derek McKee to put some defense on Simmons. McKee slip fronting Simmons, trying to deny him the ball. Simmons is forced out right of the key. Jab steps right, takes it right, rampages to the lane. Benjamin met him there and spiked it away with a block. What a beauty. Up it comes to McMillan. Nate McMillan. Find some help from Big Ben as he was trapped. Here at the 10 second mark, McMillan will get it back. Works on Simmons. Works him down the wing. Hands off the barrel. Dana circles wide with 646 to go in the ball game. Barrels mishandles the ball on a turnover. Out of bounds it goes. Kings will get it. Trailing by nine with 643 left in the ball game. Dana was a little obviously unhappy with himself. Gary Payton coming into the lineup, so the Sonics left two fairly small guards back in there again. Gary really distinguished himself in the third quarter after the 12 minutes of the first half. Did not do much. Here's Webb off the Tisdale pick. Picked up outside by Barrow. Slips it over to Richard. Plants him in the left hand. Switches to the right. Forced off the shot as he and Kemp made contact. And the foul is on Sean Kemp. It will send Mitch Richmond to the free throw line. Well, that, that, that's an interesting play to take a second look at. As Sean Kemp seemed to have position. I think what it was he had position, but apparently must have, they must have felt that he reached over him as he came in because he was there for a long time. Yeah, he leaned forward. Here's Richmond. Yeah. Three throw, rims off. Mitch Richmond, 84% on the year, number eight in the league in scoring with 23 points tonight, 90-81. It's a nine point lead. Richmond's free throw is good. The Sonics lead now. He's turned to eight. 24 for Richmond on the evening, doing 6.29 to go here in the game. Eight point lead tomorrow, the Sonics. The Celtics. Tickets still available at the Kingdom. Out on the way, get his face. Richmond in front of him, leaping out for the ball. The face skips it to Kemp. Inside the pass to Benjamin. The turnaround hook from 12. No. Rebound Coswell. 6 10 to go in the game. Here come the Kings. Pierce is up off the Sonic bench. He'll be in in a moment. Webb hesitation. Now sprints into the lane. Double team. Dr. Richmond for three. He got it. Mitch Richmond. 27 for Mitch Richmond. He is at four three point bombs tonight. And the Kings are within five at 90 to 85. 5-5-2 five, five, left here in the ball game. Gary Payton turns his back to Richmond, comes off the pick, gives it back to Sean on the roll into the lane. He walked with a basketball. Kings will take it back with 5.44 left in the game. And Ricky Pearsall will check in for Seattle with the Sonics on top 5-5. Five, five. Delay of game warning called on the Sonics. As Barrows comes over to the bench, Michael Cage gets up, and he'll be coming in at the next dead ball opportunity. And the Kings have riddled the Sonics, 5 of 10, 50%. Well, the Sonics, 3 of 4, 75% from three-point range. Richmond to the end line, shot off by Pierce. Circles back, pivots into the lane, hooks it out to Webb. He'll fire the three. Got it. But Webb, 16 points. Webb has hit two three-point bombs in this game. We talked about it in the pregame show. The Sacramento Kings like to throw it up. 
And they have here to pull back to within two at 90 to 88, 522 to go in the ballgame. Time out on the floor of the Sonic Broadcasting Network. NHL's greatest hits are on Prime Sports Northwest. The National Hockey League on Prime Sports Northwest. The hits just keep on coming. The Islanders face off with the Sabres live Friday, January 3rd at 4.30 Pacific. The Sacramento Kings, with the benefit of a Webb and Richmond three-pointer, have gone on an 8-0 run, and they have now pulled it within two of the Sonics with 5.22 left in the ballgame. And as Webb made that last three-point shot, that is four for four between Webb and Richmond at three-point range in this period. The Sonics have done a good job closing off the inside. Now they're going to have to do something about that outside. Two-point Sonic lead, 5.19 to go in the ballgame. Gary Payton up to the Pierce. And the hand of the key works off the left-hand side of the arc, hesitates, double-teamed, in-line J over Richmond, rolls off, rebound inside, Tisdale's got it. Wayman Tisdale will leave it for Webb in backcourt, and here are the Kings with a chance to tie this game again. 4.57 to go in the ballgame. Webb, ISO'd one-on-one -on -one at Peyton, down low, Simmons to the in-line, reaching in was McKee to strip him of the ball, but he handcuffed Simmons. That'll send Simmons to the line. Third foul on McKee. On the Sonics, it is the fourth team foul. The Seattle Supersonics are at the limit now, Bob. Oh, just a little isolated play in there. Yeah, well, now, a little double team over there. Ricky Pierce got over too late. A lot of people are going to be wondering, uh, yeah, with the Sonics at the limit right now, a lot of people are going to be wondering as they see Michael Cage, who has only three rebounds. Wayman Tisdale has played outside almost all night and has drawn Cage away from those boards. Simmons' free throw swirls and comes rocketing out of there. He missed it. 77% of the year can get his club with him. Wow. Here's the bowl. Big Ben with a rebound. Benjamin's been busy on the glass. He's got 11. McKee with seven rebounds. Peyton with six. Those are your rebounding leaders. Peyton on the flank. His club leading by two. 439 left. Curls into the lane outside the Pierce. Lance in. Switches up to right hand and banks it up and in. He caught a little bit of iron with that one and it rolls in. Pierce with 20. 92-88. It's a four-point lead now. 4.25 to go in the ballgame. Sonic's leading. Richmond off the pick. Hesitates into the lane. Jammed up. He and Cage make contact. This is off to Tisdale, and he wires in a 15-footer left side. 16 now for Wayman. Sonic's on top by two. 4.12 to go in the game. Peyton checked by Webb out beyond the three-point line. Conley puts his body to Webb, shielding the ball. Now on the... Pick and roll, he got it to McKee, who slants in with the left hand and lays it in. McKee with 14. E.C. Jones popped out in front of us. Derek disappeared, and then into the year he came with the left hand. Here's Richmond. Slants into the lane, switches to the right hand, a roundhouse from the belt buckle, missed it. Rebound covered in there by Cage. Took a finger of the line. Sonics now will bring it out of backcourt, leading by 494-90. 3.37 left in the game. Gary Payton in front of the Sacramento bench. Back down on Webb. A one-on-one. -on -one. Peyton takes him to the end line. Coming over from behind. Richmond swats that shot away. Simmons picks it up. Bumps it ahead to Webb. A determined look into the lane. He comes to leading with that left shoulder out there. On the dribble drive, he picks up the foul on Gary Payton. And it will send Spud Webb now to the free throw line. The Sonics are over the limit team-wise with 3.22 left in the ballgame. Sonics lead by 494-90. 
Bud Webb's greatest strength is probably on his drives, although he's hit a couple of outside three-pointers tonight. The Sonics have closed him off inside pretty well tonight, but this will end. This will be only the second time he's gone to the line going inside, drawing the foul. Webb's free throw up, and he got it. Webb with 17, 7 here in the quarter on the strength of two three-pointers. He hit both crosses. He's got 18. The Sonics hoping to snap an eight-game road losing streak. The Kings hoping to snap a five-game losing streak overall, all of which incidentally were on the road. The last one here against Orlando on the 12th of December. Payton in the corner is doubled. Off the ball, George Tolliver indicates illegal defense on the Kings. Or is it? Nope. Isolation play, illegal offense to call of the Sonics. They had three players, Pierce, Benjamin, Cage, on the weak side out beyond the three-point perimeter. A rare isolation call is called. We've seen it before. First time this year, and it gives the Kings the ball back. 3.06 to go in the fourth quarter, 94-92. The ISO is called. Inside is Simmons, spins away from McKee. There is Benjamin with another big block. Big Ben with another block shot. Benjamin on the night now has four block shots, and that was key. 2.50 to go in the game. Simmons had spun by the defense, and Benjamin was the last line. You wonder why the Sonics got Benjamin? That's why. Great shot blocker. In the corner is Peyton. Comes out from the key pick outside of Pierce for a three. Missed it. Rebound Tisdale. And he is fouled as Cage reaches in. And that sends Wayman to the free throw line for a deuce. And a chance to tie the game with 2.33 remaining in the contest. Well, Michael Cage has played a pretty good ball game tonight. This time on the rebound as the ball comes off. Reaching over and got him right on the right arm. Knocked the ball away and Tisdale will go to the line as Kevin mentioned. Chance to tie it up. Boy, I tell you, this is a very tight ball game. The Sacramento Kings, we figured, Kevin, they would come out tonight with a lot of emotion, physical fervor, and they certainly have done that. They came from 15 back in the second quarter to pull within nine and a half. And by the 2.30 mark of the third quarter, it tied it at 67 all. Tisdale hits the first. Now a chance to tie the game. Tis with 17 on the evening. 233 left, and we've got a side in. Tisdale with 18. 94-94 the score at the 233 mark here in the fourth quarter of play. Peyton Benjamin Cage, Pearson McKee on for the Sonics. 226 left in the game. Outside is Peyton, looking to Pierce, coming off the double pick down low of McKee and Benjamin. Pierce looking for McKee, posted up. He's got it. Spins by Richmond to the glass. He's pounded. McKee will go to the line. They wanted an offensive foul on McKee. Richmond did anyway, but the foul is called on Coswell. McKee will get a deuce. Tell you one thing, McKee has come to life. Nice spin move. He went one way, realized he was blacked off, spins the other way, and McKee has become very aggressive in this fourth quarter. Now, uh, Derrick had 12 points all in the first half, did not score in the third quarter. As Kevin mentioned he got his 14th on a field goal a few minutes ago. Derrick has become assertive in the Sonics' leader right now. Derrick's free throw is good. He nestles that first one in there. 15 now for Heavy D. Dwayne Coswell picks up his fourth foul. McKee's second one to put the Sonics on top by a basket. He's got it. Derrick with 16 points. Kings trail by a deuce. 215 left in the ballgame. Payton streaks out in the backcourt to pick up Spud Webb. Webb takes tiny little steps out of backcourt. Works the hash mark. Ulrich goes in the corner to Richmond. Holds that ball away from Pierce. Backs him down. Spins. Ricky. Ricky reached in and stripped Richmond of the ball. Great play by Pierce. He anticipated the drop step spin of Richmond. Mitch put the ball right into the hands of Ricky. Good defensive play by Benjamin. The block on Simmons. And now the pick of Richmond by Pierce. Peyton on the point. Out on the wing it comes to Ricky Pierce. Working on Richmond one-on-one -on -one with the left-hand dribble to the inline. Richmond reaches in. Deflects it off Ricky's thigh. And out of bounds. Kings will get it back. Sacramento trailing by two with a minute three. Eight left in the ball game, and they will call a timeout. And we will take a break on our simulcast tonight from Sacramento with the Sonics leading by two and a minute and 38 left here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. It's holiday party time. Time to have fun, especially if you don't do the work. See, that's where Safeway comes in. Just call our holiday hotline, 1-800-SAFEWAY, and Safeway will take care of everything, from deli and seafood trays to wine to fresh flowers. All you do is pick up your order at the Safeway nearest your house. And presto! Nice party, Helen. I don't know how you do it. Safeway's holiday hotline. It'll make the party. The true joys in life are not found in the empty pursuit of pleasure but in the accomplishments realized through one's own hard labor. 
For nothing satisfies the soul so much as honest toil and seeing through a job well done. Of course, having a whole bunch of money is not too bad either. There's no distinction between car and driver in the Volkswagen Jetta. They are one. A oneness we call Fahrford Nugan. It's the way the car responds to your every move. The way its German engineering translates into genuine driving pleasure. Not every car company can promise that. In fact, there's only... Test drive a 92 Jetta today at your Puget Sound Volkswagen dealers. With a minute 38 left in the game, the Sonics lead the Kings 96-94. Let's take a look at a great play tonight. Marty Conlon inside. Shot blocked by Coswell. The outlet off the backside of Tisdale. There is Barrows with a three-point. Down it goes. The great play brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft, taking the country by storm. Along with Bob Blackburn, I'm Kevin Calabro. Welcome to tonight's simulcast. The Sonics bench has overwhelmed the Kings, but the Kings down two can tie it on the Tisdale turnaround. Jay, he got it. Wayman Tisdale with 20. 123 left in the game. 96-96 to count. Gary Payton across midcourt. Now Gary's picked up by Webb. Pumps it to McKee. McKee is checked by Simmons. Out on top, they swing it to Cage. Pierce comes out to pick up Benjamin. Forced way outside, beyond the three-point line. He's got to go to Cage to get it. Picked up by Richmond. Pierce swinging left, take it right along the lane. And he comes to the roundhouse right off the iron. He is fouled in the act of shooting. And maybe the steadiest guy in the NBA from the free throw line in this situation, Ricky Pierce, will step up on the foul to Wayman Tisdale. Well, when his, when, his, when his numbers get in the hundreds, I love it. He has hit 114 of his last 117. He knew he was going to go to the free throw line. He wanted the ball, wanted the penetration. As he saw the does in the fourth quarter, knows he's going to get fouled. Let's see if he can make those two. 96 all the score with a minute two left in the ball game. And Ricky's free throw right through the heart of it. He's got 21. Isn't that a great picture of intense concentration on his face when he goes to that line? Very much so. He's got such a soft touch that when he's off the mark, look at the roll. It's 75 straight before the string was snapped in the third quarter on his first attempt at Boston. 22 now for Pierce as he hits the second. Sonic fight two. On the strength of the Pierce free throws, 98-96, 57 seconds remaining in the game. Tisdale out wide on the wing. Cage giving him some... Wide leeway, Tisdale inside, Timmons got on the inline over to Richmond from the wing, he nailed it! Mitch Richmond, 29 for Richmond. Richmond has picked up 11 of his 29 in the fourth quarter, and a big one there to tie it at 98 all. 42 seconds remaining in the game. Dayton outside, on the far side, delivers the goods to McKee. McKee checked by Simmons. High post, on the far side to Benjamin, skips it low to McKee, posts it up, turns with the left hand and misses it. McKee follows up the rebound, deflected outside, and Peyton comes away with it. Casey Jones signaling wildly for a timeout. Peyton sees him, and the Sonics call the timeout. 24 seconds remaining in the ballgame. 21 on the shot clock at Seattle at Sacramento tied at 98. Do we have one more break to take? No, we'll keep it right here. As you can see, again, McKee posted up, Bob. Got in deep and got a good opportunity, but we'll look at, look at uh, the Kings basket to tie it here. Yeah, it was, again, uh, Mitch Richmond is just like Ricky Pierce. He's the guy you want to go to in a clutch situation. The years he's had with the Warriors, the scoring, his fine touch, he does an excellent job. The play before that, of course, is the uh, Sonics got it. That nice bounce pass inside. The shot was missed by McKee on that play, but uh, Gary Payton got it flipped out to him with a rebound, immediately calls for the timeout. Well, the Sonics got out to a 15-point lead in the second quarter, but the Kings at halftime had pulled it with a 9 to 51 to 42. Three-point shooting, Bob, has been very much of uh, Sacramento's comeback here in the fourth quarter. Well, it has, as they've hit five out of five at three-point range in this fourth period. The Sonics haven't done that badly at two out of three, so they've done pretty well in the second half. You know, Seattle has not had the three-point shot as a weapon as much as they used to have when Dale Ellis was around. They have used it very well the last couple of games, however, that's helped kind of keep them around and, and help them a great deal. But tonight, unfortunately, the three-point defense... <laughs> But, you know, you take you take one thing away and you get something. You, you take away the inside from the Kings, and they're going to get that outside shot. And, hey, look, five out of five at three-point range has to be a little luck connected to that, along with the skill of the making of that shot. Six coaches in seven years here in Sacramento. Bill Johnson, Jerry Reynolds, Bill Russell, Jerry Reynolds, Dick Mata, Rex Hughes. And this must be Mike Phelps. <laughs> Mike is rallying for the job. Mike Phelps for governor, if not 
he'll uh, coach the Kings. Well, I, know, I do know, though, the Sonics had a Michael Phelps played for them, but that's not the same guy. No, not the same Mike Phelps <laughs> from Alcorn State. No. Don't think so. 98 all the score, 24 seconds remaining here in the ballgame. 21 on the shot clock. McKee, Peyton, Pierce, Kemp, and Benjamin. Timeout, Sonics with two fulls. Sacramento likewise, but the Kings have the 120-second timeout. Coming over to the ball is Peyton. Darting for the ball is Webb. Peyton reaches out, pulls that ball close to his chest, now dribbles out on the ring. 14 seconds on the shot clock, 16 on the game clock. Peyton looking for Pierce, coming off the Kemp pick. Peyton delivers to Pierce. Eight on the shot clock, 10 of the game. Pierce fires over Richmond, a long guard of 20, misses, rebound inside. Grabbed in there, and the Kings call a timeout. Simmons grabs the rebound, and the Kings quickly call the timeout with five seconds remaining in the ball game and tied at 98-98. We'll get a chance to look at the last play set for the Sonics. Well, the unfortunate part was, of course, they did not get the shot they wanted to. Sacramento played some good defense. Sonics were running the clock out. Finally, Ricky Pierce had to make his move from the outside, barely off line on the rim, and the Kings get the rebound and uh, Again, take a look at that play. Ricky Pierce just inside that three-point line had to take the long outside jumper, which I know the Sonics did not want. Rick Benner is the president of the Sacramento Kings. It was his call on Tuesday after Dick Mata unexpectedly made his retirement announcement on Monday night. Jerry Reynolds is the player personnel director here at the Sacramento Kings. It was a tough decision for them to make on Tuesday. And it's been, I tell you, a week of emotion, as you can imagine, for the Kings. On top of the Christmas, Bob, they come back home for the first time in two weeks. And Jerry Reynolds has got to find a new coach now. Yeah, that's it. That's an interesting situation for them, obviously. As you mentioned earlier, though, with a chance that the team could be sold, they might possibly possibly wait for a while and they're outlining the play whatever it is can you folks uh, tell me the diagram what they're going to do look at that and see if you can read the, those hieroglyphics down there on the floor with the chunk well this is this is a tough ball game for the sonics right now they've had some leads and i'll tell you what did it the three-point shots by webb and richmond earlier in this fourth quarter because the sonics were rolling along early in this period they had a 12-point lead at 90 to 78 since that time they have scored only eight points and the Kings have scored 20. That has been the difference, and the three-point shots are the big part of it. All right, here we go with five seconds remaining. The Kings will have it. Four court, near side. And Lionel Simmons will bring the ball in bounds with Richmond, Coswell, Tisdale, and Webb. Let's see if they play the full card here. Go to the hot hand, Mitch Richmond. They get it in bounds to Coswell with three. Over it goes to Webb. Floats one up off the iron. Won't go. Rebound grabbed by Kemp. And that ends regulation. We will go to overtime as Webb floats up the running right-hander that goes just off the backside. 98-98. We go to overtime following this on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Present cold filter Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. You've been asking for it. Now you're gonna get it. The NHL's greatest hits are on Prime Sports Northwest. The National Hockey League on Prime Sports Northwest. The hits just keep on coming. The Islanders face off with the Sabres. We go to overtime. The Kings have never been in overtime this year. The Sonics are one and two. 
98-98, we begin play with the Kings winning the draw. Richmond inside, Simmons to the lane, stop, pop, eight-footer, no go. Rebound to Big Ben. Benjamin up to 12 rebounds on the night. Gary Pate will bring it across. Sonics were outscored in the fourth quarter, 29-21. to Payton on the far side, delivers to McKee. McKee coming over to the ball side, covered by Simmons, turns, faces up, outside to Pierce. Drops it low, inside, Benjamin double-teamed, out to Kemp, open, 15-footer, floats it up, and in and out. Webb snatches the rebound. Kings looking to score for the first time in overtime with 419 left in their second possession. Here's Bud Webb. Stops beyond the three-point line. Over to Richmond. Mitch Richmond picks up the dribble. Lops it low. Bonner into the lane. Sprints to the glass. Turns and got a foul. Foul is on camp on the push. Well, you hate to see a team uh, on the home court uh, going to the line too much right now to win this game at the free throw line. They've made the nice penetration that time. I don't know how much push uh, Sean Kemp had on that one, but enough conduct apparently for the officials to blow the whistle. And if anybody objects to it, actually, there have been a lot of calls tonight go both ways, so I don't think it's been anybody favored in that area. Well, if you've got a guy to go to the line, you want Bonner. If you're Casey Jones, 59%, he flings this one up there and rattles and comes out. Shows why. <laughs> if you're Rex Hughes, you wish you could use the designated free throw shooter. Anthony Bonner, second one up, missed them both, but Coswell got a rebound. Out he goes to Simmons. Over on the flank, Webb with it. Webb on the near side. Challenged by McKee. Up fakes. Puts a dribble on the floor. McKee pushes him out. Webb will fire up a long one on the fade. He missed it. Rebound to Gary Payton. Boy, Payton's picked up eight rebounds on the night. Pumps it ahead to Pierce on the far side. Down low. It goes to Kemp. Nice behind the back. Wraparound pass to Payton. It surprised him. Nearly lost it out of bounds. Kemp saves it. But right to Richmond. Richmond across the for a full head of steam. Over to Coswell. And he comes with a cushion two-handed jam. Coswell's got six. 198. 332 left in the ball game. The Kings use the Sonic turnover to score. Gary Payton will bring it up. Gary off to the far side. Hoist it on top to McKee. Back to Pierce. Try to fire one low to Payton. It was deflected off Webb. Hit the glass. Richmond's got it. Richmond out of backcourt to Webb. Fires it up the wing with it is Simmons. Simmons on the far side. Backs down on Pierce. Ricky reaches in. Draws the foul. Non-shooting foul on Ricky Pierce. Yeah, that was one of those kind of no harm, no foul type things. Ricky kind of shakes his head. Got him a little bit on the arm, but he didn't even interrupt the dribble of Simmons that time. 3-11 to go in the overtime. 100-98. to 98. Kings by a deuce. Richmond drops a load of Coswell on the overplay. Benjamin knocking Coswell off the ball. And from the weak side, Kemp pokes it free, and Payton has got it. Now Gary Payton will bring it up. Payton on the far side with a Sonic trail by two with 2.56 to go. Benjamin High Post drops it low. Kemp had room on Bonner. Snuck by him to the glass and lays it softly in there. Kemp with 15 points. We're tied in overtime at 100. 2.46 left in the game. Sonic trying to snap an eight-game road losing streak. Richmond on the point. Checked by Pierce. Richmond looking for Simmons. Overplayed by McKee. Denies him the ball. Out on top. It comes to Webb. Beyond the three-point line. Starts his weave into the lane. Stops. Stop. Fires one up. Missed it. Rebound. Benjamin tied up with Coswell. We've got a jump ball. You know, I might mention Dwayne Coswell, whom you called a moment ago with six points. He also tonight has played awfully hard, has a career-high rebounding. He's had 15 boards. So this is the most Coswell has had in these two years now with the Kings since coming out of Temple University. Uh, bon, uh, Benjamin has picked off 12 rebounds for the night, so those two have really been at it. Coswell and Benjamin, both seven-footers. Benjamin beat him to the draw. Out ahead to Peyton on the scamper to the glass. He beat the pack back and jams it home. 12 points for Gary Peyton on a tremendous tip from Benjamin. 102 to 100, 224 left in the ball game. Big Ben got, boy, he got up and got after that ball on the tip. I mean, he timed it beautifully. To spike it in the front court, Peyton scrambled after it. Sonic's by two now, 2.14 to go. Richmond, trapped outside, picks up the dribble, hands to Coswell. Richmond gets the dribble back, heads into the key. Pierce in there, hacked him. Ricky Pierce reaching in, hacks. Mitch Richmond. That is the fourth foul on Ricky Pierce on the Sonics. It is the fourth team foul as well. Yeah, it puts them at the limit here in the overtime right now, so that could be a big factor. 2.07 left in overtime. Sonics by two. Richmond will bring it in bounds. Peyton goes to the deck. He's up as Webb gets the ball in the inbounds. Hands to Richmond. Isolate a one-on-one -on -one up here. They clear out. Richmond, the crossover right to left. Hand dribble. Kemp comes over to double Richmond. Jump pass to Simmons. Centers to Tisdale. Out to Webb. Open three. He'll fire. Two Sonic crush on him. He missed it. Rebound to Pierce. Taps it out to midcourt. Webb has got it. Webb back into the lane. Dirts between the double team and shovels it up and in. 
Webb has got 20. We're tied again. Up come the Sonics. Peyton to Kemp. Back to Peyton. Rolls into the lane. Trap double team. Shovels outside of McKee. Over to Pierce on the far wing. 141 left in the overtime. Tied at 102-102. Pierce down low to Kemp. Posted up. Stops. Pivots. Tisdale on it. Double. Outside to Pierce. Over to McKee. Slides him with the left hand. Ran over Webb. The no look feed to Peyton. Reverse inside. Yes! He is fouled. And Gary Peyton will go to the line. The Sonics by two. 104 to 102. How did McKee get that pass down low to Peyton? What a beautiful play. That was not only a fantastic to get it in there, there was oh, a lot of a stumbling pass. around on the plate, got the pass in, and Peyton made a tremendous up fake to get in the clear, drawing the foul at the same time. Look at this. He just by inches got it by the body of Richmond to Peyton. That was as fine a pass as you are going to see. You know, Peyton had no points in the first half, an 0 for 5 shooting. He now has 15 after that foul shot. 10 in the third quarter, 15 now for Peyton, and the Sonics lead by 3, 105 to 102 with a minute 27 to go in the overtime. We'll be back following the break on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. And on radio, we'll keep it right here at the Arco Arena. Along with Bob Blackburn, I'm Kevin Calabro. And our simulcast, the TV audience will stay with us as well here tonight. So Gary Payton's three-point play after the foul of the free throw. And the Sonics lead it 105-102 with a minute 2-7 left here in the overtime. You talk about a key jump ball in the contest. Watch this one. You know, on that jump ball a few minutes ago, that was such a big play. Coswell is a tough man to jump against, but Ben went up, and that's a play that you work on. That's one of those things just doesn't happen. And when, when he saw Ben go up, Gary Payton started streaking down court, was there. Great play. Now, Coswell, it seemed, was trying to get his footing for the jump ball. It was not set. Benjamin was set and ready to go, and he timed it beautifully, just spiking that ball at its apex. King, Kings are Kings are getting a lot of shots. Two out of six, 33%. They've had two more shots than the Sonics, but Seattle's 75%. They're getting the good shots. They're taking them, hitting three out of four in this uh, overtime so far. Incidentally, both clubs at the end of regulation time were hitting exactly the same 46%. So you can see while the Sonics, I think probably talent-wise, there's no question, have a much better club than Sacramento. Coming in here tonight, Sacramento playing with a lot of emotion. First day for the new coach. You knew this was going to happen. And the Sonics have not had a good night uh, with turnovers at the end of the ball game tonight, the Sonics had had 21 turnovers, giving up 25 points, and the Kings 17 for 19 points. But the big thing there, Seattle is at eight in the second half, and the Kings only three. Rick Benner contemplating uh, tonight's activities. He's the president of the Sacramento Kings. I tell you, uh, the folks in the front office are as nice of people as you you could ever meet. Rick Benner, I've known Rick for several years. I'm a very nice fellow, astute uh, manager of, of folks. And Jerry Reynolds is a I wonder wonderful wants, guy. What if he wants my fingernail clippers instead of what he's doing? I'll tell you, right I'll tell you he's really working them. <laughs> 121 left in the overtime. 105-102. It's a three-point Sonic lead. Webb out on the wing and a foul down low. Coming over to the ball was Tisdale. And McKee on the overplay got a little overzealous. That is the fourth foul on McKee. Puts the Sonics over the limit. And it will send Tis or actually Simmons to the free throw line. It was Simmons that McKee was trying to deny the ball to. So here is Lionel, the L train, a 77 percenter on the year from the line. Simmons has yet to shoot. The bigger part, he has put up two already tonight from the line. He's missed both of those. And this one is good. So the Kings are to within one. Rex Hughes in his debut as an NBA coach. It's been a good one. His team has played hard for him. Came from 12 back in the fourth quarter to tie it, get it into overtime. Came from 15 back in the second quarter. Simmons, second one, good. 18 for Simmons. Sonics lead by one with possession. A minute 15 left in overtime in Sacramento. On the far side, Gary Payton backpedals down the pike. He is covered in front of the Kings bench by Spud Webb. Over to pick now is Sean Kemp. Kemp to screen, Tisdale waiting. Payton circles off the pick, free throw line right, skips it out here to Pierce. Pierce from three-point land will let it go, and he got it! He hit the three! Ricky Pierce rings the bell. 25 for Ricky Pierce. What do you know about that? Sonics by four, 108-104. 52 seconds remaining in overtime. Tisdale with 54, close it up, no go, rebound. Big Fred! Benjamin with 13 rebounds. 45 seconds remaining in OT. 108-104. 41 seconds remaining in the overtime. Midcourt. Payton fouled by Richmond. Mitch Richmond fouls Gary Payton. The Kings are at the T limit of four. It is the first in the last two minutes. Actually over the limit in the last two. And so it will be the Sonics at the line. Gary Payton will step up there. Ironically, Payton's three-pointer and Ricky Pierce's long-range three-point dart 
putting the Sonics in front by four with 38 seconds remaining. You know, Kevin, we, have, we haven't commented on it while fans are leaving, but one thing I'd like to comment on, as you notice, the guys on the floor right now, except for the game against Golden State when this five play together, this is the starting five that Casey Jones envisioned for the year. They have not played much together. They're in in crunch time in this ballgame. In fact, for only the second time this year, the Sonics have had their intended roster actually without Eddie Johnson. I take that back. They haven't yet had everybody together except in the one game that was the Golden State game. Gary Payton misses the free throws. The Kings have new life with 37 seconds remaining. 108 to 104. Gary goes 0 for 2 on that trip to the stripe. KC Jones looking off into the crowd here. We'll go back and address his team with a four point lead at 37 seconds remaining. I guess you have to stress defense on the perimeter here. You can't allow Webb the spot up three, nor can you allow Richmond to come off and get the three point shot off quickly. If they do take the three, you want to have to make them use some clock here. 38 seconds remaining is plenty of time for a team that's rifled in five for five in the fourth quarter. For well, three that's point right. They're five for five in the fourth period. They have missed the one which Webb took in this uh, in this overtime. But you're right. This is one time when you don't want to not give a challenge of some kind of that three point shot. It would be better if they get the ball inside, get the two, because you're still ahead by two and you have possession of the ball. But if they get that three point shot to get down, one point separating you, you don't score the next time down court. They're in a position to come right back and win it. Well, we've been uh, getting pictures on television tonight, and our producer's been anxious to show that this guy, I don't know whether he, he, he can't be superstitious yet because he hasn't even won a game, but he's wearing socks with holes in it. He couldn't have gotten those for Christmas yesterday, <laughs> the new coach. You know, we might mention that uh, uh, Ticketmaster probably is closed by now at about 10 o'clock, 628-0888, but that's the number. Tomorrow morning, you folks can call. Should have a great ball game with the Boston Celtics in town there, of course. Those who want to can be watching it, doing a little scouting in their hotel room on TV tonight. And, of course, uh, getting the rest up there while the Sonics are in an overtime. But one thing that's going to help Seattle tomorrow night, especially if Eddie Johnson comes back, Seattle's bench has played a lot tonight. They've taken a lot of pressure off of the starters, so everybody should be comparatively fresh for the second game two nights in a row. Jimmy Les, three-point shooter extraordinaire, led the NBA in percentage last year, checks in with Spud Webb, Lionel Simmons. And Mitch Richmond, all three three-point shooters, all four of those guys, really. And Bonner is the lone rebounder. Sonics uh, get a look at the Kings lineup and immediately call a timeout with 37 seconds remaining in the game. Here in the overtime, the Sonics leading it 108 to 104. Following the game against the Boston Celtics tomorrow, the Sonics will get a chance to rest, to mend. Very possibly Eddie Johnson will be able to join them, although he told Nate McMillan that he felt like he might be able to go tomorrow against the Boston Celtics at the Kingdom. We'll wait and see as Eddie underwent the sinus surgery on Monday, and we wish the best to Eddie Johnson. The Sonics' next action will be at home to begin the month of January on the 2nd. That's a Thursday when they take on the Miami Heat, so the Sonics will have actually Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, five days before they next get it on against the Heat in January on the 2nd. The first of nine home and eight road games, 17 games in the month of uh, January for the Seattle Supersonics. No real long trips. The only one being a three-game in a four-night trip down to uh, Texas for a Dallas matchup on Friday the 10th, Houston on the 11th, and the LA Clippers on Monday the 13th. The Sonics' next big and last extended road trip will uh, get underway on January the 28th when they go on the road for a total of six games in nine nights. It'll cover Orlando, Miami, Charlotte, Milwaukee, Atlanta, New Jersey. That'll span into February. We'll actually lead right up to the All-Star break. So it looks like a favorable schedule for the Sonics, who, as we have mentioned, if can, they can stay near 500, they are now two games over 500 coming into tonight's play. And stay healthy, Bob. They have a chance, as good a chance as anybody in the Pacific Division, yeah, because to make they, some noise. Even tonight, after losing to Portland, even tonight they came in three games out of first place. And uh, the team, some of them ahead of them are winning, but the Sonics have a chance to hold in. The Golden State won again tonight at Denver. Well, now we've had the chess moves of the coaches. The, the uh, advent of the three-point shooters coming in, and Casey Jones' chance to look at three-point defense. At six guys on the floor there for a moment. Benjamin now finally comes off, and the Kings will bring it in bounds. 37 seconds remaining. Delay a game warning. Whistled on the Sonics. That allows them to get a look at the Sacramento Kings sets. 37 seconds remaining. That is the second delay of game warning. They're quite right. They called one back in the first quarter of play. I tell you. Wait, what did he say? The delay earlier was not called? It was in the other half, first half. All right, so there's the there's the rule. Les will bring it in bounds. 
to Webb. Back to Les. He will fire off a three in motion. He got it, but they're wiping it out. They say no. They say trouble with the ball. Jimmy Les can't believe it. It looked as if Les had been fouled on the three-pointer that went. Jack Nee says the men walked with the basketball. We'll get a chance to look at it. Here's a key play with the Sonics up by four. All right. Well, he did drag the pivot foot, it looked like, but it was a very close call. Well, remember, it was on this basket right here that Dale Ellis got a couple of four-point plays on the three-pointers a few a couple of years back. That would have tied the game had Nee's whistled the foul as the crowd fought, and as Rex Hughes thought, he should have out there. I tell you, it has been a game of a lot of unusual calls both ways, and there's no question Sonics have had some great, great breaks on some calls tonight. Man, what a call. Oh, you can't get any better call like that when you're on the road. Four-point lead for the Sonics. Simmons doing his best to foul Pearson backward. Grabbed him, and finally the foul is called. It'll send Pierce to the line with 30 seconds remaining. Ricky Pierce will step up to the line. He is at four for four in tonight's game. He has 25 points. The Sonics lead is four at 108 to 104. And the strategy there quite obvious. Inbound to Ricky Pierce, no matter what you do, you know he's going to be fouled with the clock running down. Send your best foul shooter, the second best in the league, to the free throw line. And I'm not sure he's not the best. Price is uh, get 44 out of 45, but Ricky's been to the free throw line about three times as much as Price as Cleveland. Ricky Pierce to the line. Sonics trying to snap the eight-game road losing streak to go six and nine on the road, 15 and 12 on the year, 25 for Pierce tonight in the battle with Richmond. Richmond is 29, but has not yet scored in the overtime. Pierce hits the free throw, and the Sonics lead he is up to five. 109-104, 31 seconds remaining in the game. Jim Les called with a walk as he hit the three-point shot. Ricky Pierce shot up, got it. So Pierce with 27 on the night. Puts the Sonics on top by six. Can't let him get the quick hoop. Richmond will attempt the three. In and out. Rebound, Sean Kemp. Kemp has played extremely well after not dressing for the last six. He is fouled by Les. And it will send Sean Kemp to the line with 23 and 8 tenths seconds remaining. And Seattle's lead of 6, 110 to 104. Well, as the Sonics get the break on the call on Les tonight, you have to go back and you'll remember Kevin and myself at the beginning of a road trip here uh, earlier in the season at Cleveland. Uh, that went into overtime, the Sonics lost. Gary Payton had an obvious bad call made against him. A big swing in the last minute of the play. Sonics got the bad break on that one tonight. Maybe they get the break the other way. So, Kevin, things do sometimes even up. Yeah, I guess when you look at it that way, you're right. Kemp hits the free throw. He's got 16. Eight rebounds for Sean. Whale of a night. Second one up. Got a goal. 17 for Sean. It doesn't seem to be hampered in his shoot. The fact that he has it tightly bound. Eight-point lead for the Sonic. Simmons drives into the lane. Missed the lay-in. Good defense by Kemp. Rebound to Pierce. Out to Conlon. Back to Ricky. Out of backcourt. Flips it ahead to Kemp. In he comes. Loops it ahead. Gary will catch and shoot and score. And he's fouled. <laughs> 17 for Peyton. Seven here in the overtime. And the Sonics will go to the line. Leading by 10. 114-104 with 9 and 9. 10 know, seconds remaining in the game. A little irony to that one. It is usually, now watch, Cam with the lob up to the rim. It, it could have been for a slam dunk, but it wasn't quite high enough for Gary to get up and dunk it. The pass that either McMillan or Peyton has made many times to Kemp in reverse. Reversal of rolls. Peyton hits the free throw. 18, 8 in the overtime for Gary. He's played well. After a tough beginning, Richmond finger rolls into the lane. 31 for Mitch. He'll lead all scores tonight. Sonics bring it in bounds, and the Sonics have won this one as McKee will dribble out the clock. The final in Sacramento in overtime. The Sonics win it. 115 to 106. The boo from the crowd is not for the Kings. It's for the officiating crew. But the Sonics win it in OT by nine. We'll be back to recap it for you in a moment here on the Sonics Broadcasting Network. Sonics basketball has been brought to you by Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft and Miller Genuine Draft Light, taking the country by storm. Coca-Cola Classic, you can't beat the real thing. Seafirst Bank, isn't it time to switch to Seafirst? Subaru, it's one to drive. Alaska Airlines, again and again. Frequent travelers rate Alaska the best airline in the United States. GTE, the power is on. Jack in the Box, always something new. And by Jeep and Eagle, the official vehicles of the NBA.